Hey there, folks, and welcome back to the Rome Campaign. Last time, we conquered our way across the Italian peninsula, going northwestward into the Italia region and southeastward into the Magna Graecia region. Unfortunately, the intervention of some foreign entities did prevent us from getting everything we wanted in one clean sweep. Uh, in terms of what's on the mainland peninsula, of course, the uh, Italia and Magna Graecia regions include some islands that are a bit out of reach, uh, Corsica, Sardinia, and uh, Sicily. But over in the northwest, we did miss out on these two tiles here that are part of the Ariminum province. Uh, Troria holds them still, thanks to them being under siege by some Gauls when we were in the area. We have a claim getting finished on them at the minute that's going to be done July 1st of this year. But our truce with Etruria isn't done until early 462, so we are going to hold off on that for now. Incidentally, by the time we can act on that uh, claim uh, a bit sort of midway into the current uh, consulship, uh, we will do a very small-scale war, nothing too crazy given our low consular marshal. We'll talk about that in just a second. We're going to seize this territory from Etruria to finish our control of mainland Italia, but then we're also going to take the chance to actually seize... Corsica from Etruria. They still control this Corsican holding, and by this point I will have a sufficient navy, hopefully, to be able to... Um, well, honestly, I just need to send one guy over because there's a uh, no fort over here, so we should be able to, at this point, uh, have enough of a navy to at least send a unit over to seize this, and that will be the main goal of the war. Other than that, the next uh, five-year period will mostly be peaceful. I'm not planning to go to war in any other capacity except for just this small scale claiming and, and taking of the rest of Italia. Um, once we do this, Etruria will be fully kicked out of the Italia region and I will leave them to do whatever they do up in Cisalpine Gaul. Probably get killed by the Gauls, to be fully honest, or by Veneto, another uh, Italian nation, of course. Um, or Italic nation, I should say. I guess it's also Italian if you think about it. But um, Etruria lacks a lot of their core population. Uh, we've really stripped them of most of the Etruscans, so they're going to struggle with their limited numbers now. Maybe they can make use of mercenaries, but we shall see what they get up to. In the center of our land, we've got our uh, feudatories, uh, many of whom are approaching that 190 threshold to begin integration. We're now 10 years in, so I believe we could start integrating, at least at this point, Marcia, who actually does have over 190. We'll come back to that later. In the south, in Magna Graecia, our expansion plans were interrupted by the arrival of two powerful foreign nations, uh, powerful different ways, really, that have kind of complicated our plans. Obviously, uh, Carthage has taken over much of Sicily, which is part of Magna Graecia, and more infuriatingly, they've arrived on the mainland of the peninsula, and there's not too much I can do about this at the minute. The first Punic War of this campaign will have to wait until we're feeling confident enough to fight Carthage. At the minute on land, uh, we do bring uh, 318 Hellenic Romans, but they have a stronger levy slash levies and legions with 465 Punics. Could even be more than that, but that at least is the minimum they're bringing. And Carthage uh, does have a fondness as an AI for mercenaries. This has been my experience, or at least they have a lot of mercenary benefits uh, in their mission trees and whatnot, thanks to the historic uh, role mercenaries played for Carthage in the real-life Punic Wars, so I suspect Carthage will be a formidable opponent on land, and uh, at sea, Carthage, of course, at this point does have a pretty sizable fleet, smaller than I would have expected it to be, but this is still definitely worth noting. Um, before we fight Carthage, we need to essentially try our best to establish naval superiority, uh, which may be a, a tall order given um, the historic <laughs> nature of Roman Carthage's uh, land versus ocean um, dynamics. Uh, but in this campaign, we're going to try our best to overcome that morale of navies uh, malice that we have and build some very strong fleets, which we'll be doing uh, very soon in this episode. I have a plan in place to basically build uh, a number of powerful fleets on the cheap, which may help us contest the seas from Carthage and, for that matter, from the other major foreign nation that's now muscling into Magna Graecia, that being Epirus. They actually also have quite a large fleet at this point. Epirus, with their very good martial leader, is quite intimidating. And, more annoyingly than that, they have um, started interfering in Magna Graecian politics. Uh, they've been um, taking territory. They also have made all of the remaining independent Greek city-states in Magna Graecia their feudatories. 
including by canceling a war I was in with Alea to declare them a feudatory. That was pretty annoying. And so now we sort of are paralyzed in the south with really nowhere to go without fighting Epirus. Of course, any war with any feudatory of Epirus or with Epirus directly also calls in all of the other Epirote feudatories because feudatories always follow their overlord into every war, no matter the circumstance. And at the minute, war with Epirus slash the feudatories also brings in their defensive league, which is a bunch of city-states and small nations over in the Greek world, who I'm assuming are sort of under Epirus's protection in the form of a defensive league. Now, I'm in the middle of uh, executing a kind of convoluted strategy where I basically manipulate Epirus into becoming a regional power, so they lose access to the defensive league mechanic because only city-states and local powers can be in defensive leagues or join them. And I'm, I was fairly sure last episode that someone in a defensive league that becomes a regional power is kicked out of their league. I was looking between episodes online for any documentation about that. I was pretty sure I wouldn't find anything for a question that specific. With Imperator Rome, questions like that, you're usually out of luck. But to my surprise and delight, uh, there was actually a section on the Imperator Rome wiki in the part about defensive leagues where this exact strategy was actually identified and described. Um, so I, I promise I didn't see that on the wiki before I came up with the idea. Someone else has also come up with this idea, which reassures me that this idea will work and that it works in the way that I think it will. So I think Operation uh, Trick Epirus into becoming too big for its britches is... Uh, the, the name is work in progress. <laughs> that, that operation is uh, in effect. And in um, a few weeks here, in two weeks, we're going to be able to sell Epirus a bit more land and get them to 25 territories, and that is the threshold to becoming regional power. So we will do just that. Now, um, in terms of my naval plans, I'm not going to do it quite, but I will just describe it really quick. What I'm going to do in a bit is I'm going to build uh, three navies, and the plan here is for absolute uh, naval supremacy over um, Carthage, who I, I and Epirus to some extent, both of whom I believe will probably build more ships. I want to ensure that I have got just the sheer numbers and power to control the oceans and to sort of future-proof myself so that I have sufficient uh, uh, ships in order to transport both my levy, uh, in the future perhaps even levies, as my Magna Gratia territories continue assimilating. Same thing with the um, Italia territories too, everyone is assimilating right now. Um, I want to make sure that I've got enough transportation to carry around all my armies and also mercenaries. So I thought about having uh, two fleets of uh, 30. If you don't know, and to be fair, I sort of don't know as well because uh, naval composition isn't really one of my strong suits with this game. I don't worry about it too often, but my understanding is that um, each uh, naval combat, there's 30 combat width and each ship uh, is worth one combat width. And so the general wisdom that I've seen online is to fill your navies with the best combination you can of the heaviest ships available to you and then some lighter ships for flanking. And you really can't overlook the flanking component of a navy um, because uh, lighter ships have better maneuver, which leads to better flanking. Same logic as with land armies, where you want to have a mixture of sort of line holding infantry and then usually cavalry to do flanking. Now, in the case of our navies, we have a level three port now, or tier three port in Ostia, meaning we can recruit medium ships. And we do have wood here locally, so we can also I recruit medium ships for that reason. So my plan is to go overboard here because I have uh, the chance to stack up some cost saving bonuses and basically put in a massive order for three navies of 30 ships each. Each navy and the plan at the minute is that each navy will be uh, 20 hexares and 10 liburnians. So the hexares are the heaviest ship that we or realistically anybody else has available to, uh, right now. True heavy ships like Octares and Megi Pol uh, <laughs> Mega Pol Pol not Megi Polyremes. Uh, Mega Polyremes. Uh, these ships all require traditions, and um, it's possible Carthage gets access to this, but I actually kind of remember that Carthage doesn't have access to heavy ships in their traditions. I don't know. Uh, I don't think anyone probably has reliable access to this stuff at the minute. Let's just leave it at that. Um, and this will all take quite a while, a full half year per hex array. So this will take some time to be constructed. The plan is to, because um, I will put everything in the queue order, but I'll start with the Liburnians of the, um, of the three fleets. 
just so we have uh, 30 Liburnians for basic transportation purposes first. And then we will, uh, of course, queue up all the hex arrays. The nice thing with building ships is you can basically build all of your ships in one moment and then they're queued up. And then if your uh, ship build cost reduction modifiers go away, it doesn't like cause any effect on the ships that are in the queue. You've already ordered them. So then, uh, you, so basically you can sort of do a giant single moment expenditure of all of your ships that you want and you don't need to worry too much about that. You know what I mean? So the basic plan here is I'm going to make use of my national modifier I have for a few more months here, military expansion. I'm going to switch uh, ordered retreat temporarily over to permanent shipyards. In fact, I'll do this right now. We've read this before. We know what it does. Ship building cost minus 25%. So we're going to have uh, now minus 45% ship cost. So we can go back over to our ships. 14 gold for, or sorry, 9 gold for hex array, 3 per Liburnian. That's pretty cheap. And we're going to go ahead and set this up in just a sec. We're going to be building our Liburnians uh, evenly across all of our ports. And then we're going to build and start building all the hex arrays at Ostia because it's the only tier 3 port we have. May as well make use of Ostia time-wise in the best way possible with uh, everything being in just focused there. Also, it looks like that cost reduction reduced the time needed because now, yeah, that's interesting. I actually didn't know that that reduced it so much, but 125 days is much faster. So pretty pleased with that. Right, we're going to uh, get to this in just a sec. But first, I do want to note what's going on with our consoles as my plan for the next five years to mostly be about uh, building up our navies and focusing on our economy and infrastructure is mostly due to our new government. So we've got the year of Appius and Appius, another uh, name team up going on here, like in our first console ship. Incidentally, uh, our very first console, Publius Sempronius Sophus, as noted last episode, has a turned cloak and become a popularis. I'm not unclear exactly why that happened, but he seems to have brought a lot of the Optimates control with him over to the popularis faction. I've never seen the popularis with this much control yet in this campaign, so they are having a bit of a moment right now. Um, and then he's also the Pontifex Maximus, by the way, at the minute. Uh, our former consul, the second one, Publius Cornelius Barbatus, is now the censor. The Optimates are still the second most powerful party with their 34% uh, rounded up control. And of course, uh, they and the Popularis both have pretty good approval. But it is now the day of the Boni with the 15% uh, build cost reduction and monthly wages for characters minus 10%. Of course, their faction leader is Appius Claudius Caicus, who is our uh, current uh, new consul. So we were looking at 3987, which is pretty good in every way except for leading troops. Even in the context of the national modifier effect, we've got a very good co-consul giving us 10 martial and incidentally 9 charisma. We'll talk about him in just a sec. But in terms of traits, Appius is a scholar. Appius simply devours knowledge as if it were a hearty meal. It seems to sustain him about as much too. So he was actually formerly a researcher, of course. Um, but as the ruler and as the governor of Italia, uh, he's a minus one marshal from this trait. Uh, as the governor, uh, we are getting 10% more research points from Italia, so that's pretty nice. And as the ruler, all of our tech is 5% faster, which is actually pretty good. It helps compensate for losing him as one of our good researchers. He is also a founder. Uh, Appius has visions the likes of which has not been seen since the days of Solomon and Romulus or the great pharaohs of old. So in Italia, that is citizen output plus 6%, and then everywhere, build cost reduction minus 5%, that's gonna synergize well with our other build cost bonuses right now, and monthly stab change plus 0.02. Um, and then over here, he's maimed, martial minus two, helps explain his low martial, horrifying injuries, scar Appius from head to toe. He's also got the blood of the Claudii, which uh, is to say the first of the Claudii was a Sabine by the name of Attius Clausus, who came to Rome with his retainers in the sixth year of the Republic during the conflict between Rome and the Sabines. Um, Claudius was seeking for peaceful solution, but when his efforts failed, he defected to the Romans, bringing with him no fewer than 500 men able to bear arms. Let me check my volume really quick to make sure this is set correctly. All right, whoops. All right, the beginning of this episode may have been a bit loud, so I've adjusted that now. I had it set to my Baldur's Gate 3 volume configuration. My bad. Um, anyways, so as uh, someone with the blood of the Claudii uh, in Italia, we've got 10% more defensive forts, so that's handy potentially. But as the ruler, here's the better part. Omen power plus 10%. That's pretty good. And at the minute, what that means is higher tax rate because our current omen is coming from Pluto. 
Uh, and then lastly, he's arbitrary, one less finesse, and minus 0.05 monthly stab change. When it really comes down to it, does anyone really care what is right or wrong? So um, overall, um, a pretty solid set of traits, and there's a lot of synergy with a sort of a finesse and uh, economy focus for this guy's reign. So we're going to be doing that. We've put him onto sta influence stakeholders already. His co-console is uh, Appius Claudius Gaudix, so another Appius Claudius. In fact, I think they're probably related. Um, and this guy over here, uh, 10795, he's ambitious, prominent, blood the Claudii, and is a, an original thinker. So um, in terms of national effects, we've got a pretty good set here uh, with the 10 Marshal coming from our co-consul, manpower recovery speed 10%, and army morale recovery 10%. Um, the finesse bonus from uh, Caudix. Um, or hold on, wait. This is actually wrong. It's coming from our, our main console of uh, Caicos, but 18% reduced build cost and 18% increased commerce income. Uh, yeah, so this is just, the, the UI is glitched. This should be saying it's coming from that guy. So I don't know why that's wrong, but it doesn't matter. Uh, monthly war exhaustion, minus 0.07, and monthly stab change, plus 0.07. And then our charisma is actually coming from Caudex, uh, plus 1.80 claim fabrication speed, and minus 0.09 a monthly tyranny. So pretty good overall. Right, with that noted, let's go ahead and get our five-year period of mostly peace, aside from the Saturian War, going. My plan is to, first of all, order all of the Hexarays in Ostia, which is the only place I can build them. Let's just get these going. So, um, now that I've got all these modifiers going, uh, I've got shipyards. We're going to switch this back over once we get this order in, because I, I don't need to be on this. So... We'll have this for now, and then once we have enough PI, we'll switch this back over to the other martial idea that I had before, uh, Ordered Retreat, which is generally going to be better to maintain over this one. But for now, we've got the minus 45% cost. I don't think there's any other modifiers I can stack up right at the second to get additional cost reduction, so let us go for it. We are going to uh, get our uh, 60 hexarays order. Remember, it's uh, three sets of 20. And building three fleets in one go may seem a little overkill, but we're future-proofing ourselves. This uh, sort of naval order, which is only really doable for now at this minimum, of this low of a cost with that modifier that's going to go away in a couple of months, we need to try to make the most out of it. And I'll, I'll look and see at our remaining money and sort of decide if even potentially a fourth or a fifth fleet ordered right now is feasible. I suspect three might be about what we can re uh, reasonably get away with in terms of the economy, but uh, let's remember that uh, these these guys will cost maintenance, although it's not that much per ship. It does add up over time, so we are going to be really investing quite a bit in the Navy here. So let's get to it. Looks like it's even rounding down, which is quite nice of the game to do. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, I can just look at it on the units construction tab so we can just spam this. Once we get to 125 days plus... 59, that will be perhaps a little out of reach looking at my money now. Okay, it was not out of reach. So if I'm reading this correctly, this should be 60 hex arrays under construction uh, on the cheap. I think uh, this <laughs> we've used a lot of our money for this, but the hex arrays are a lot more expensive than the Liburnians, and we are building more of them. Right, so next up we're going to be building 30 uh, Liburnians for the 10 for each of the three fleets, and I don't think we'll be able to get a fourth or fifth navy out right now. We'll do that later. Uh, I think six, or I mean, I, I think uh, three navies with a composition I said earlier should be enough for our needs at the minute. So here's the plan. Let me look at all my ports here. We have got... How many ports do we have? Okay, we got one here, two, three, not including Ostia, four... Five, six. Okay, let's see. 30. Can I divide 30 by 6? This is something I think I should probably know offhand, but I am bad with math. I am. I can build five Liburnians at each of these. I can build five Liburnians at each of these uh, smaller ports, and then I can organize them once they're all built. So let's just do it like that. So that is nice and easy. All right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Also, these guys take longer because we're not at the higher level uh, port, but it is what it is. All right. We can definitely get these guys fitted in. One, two, three, four, five. And 
And then over here. Okay. So let's see. That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Looks like we've got our three fleets under construction. Uh, even though Ostia is building these hex arrays quite quickly, it's going to take a long time to finish all these hex arrays. So we're going to have uh, more uh, Liburnians ready before we have the, he the heavier ships. That's perfectly fine. Um, again, we're not needing to use this navy necessarily within the next five years, or aside from just some basic transportation purposes, but we can just have a Liburnian carry a guy over to grab a Lalia, which is unfortified, should be perfectly fine. Etruria, incidentally, does still have two ships, but by this point we should have naval supremacy over two. I think we're going to be able to pull that off. So, we got our navy construction underway. Now, once we have enough PI, we'll switch back over to um, uh, ordered retreat uh, for now. Right. Okay, and then let's go ahead and take a look at our feudatories. So, Marcia does have um, enough opinion of us for us to start integration. This is a pretty quick integration. It's going to finish April 1st of 462. Figure I may as well go for it. Uh, it's so quick because they're a very small nation. Normally this can take quite a bit longer, but this looks good to me. Let's go ahead and get this integrated. We'll basically start to kind of gobble up all of this territory that has been held by our feudatories in our sort of central area here. This will improve the border war situation a fair bit. So start integration. Don't think there's any reason to really do it in some other order. No one else can start it quite yet. So start the integration of Marcia. Do you wish to fully integrate the Italic local power of Marcia? They will no longer be another nation on the map, but instead ruled directly by our local governors who will keep the population in check. <coughs> It will take until 1st of April, 462, to fully integrate the Italic local power of Marcia. Yes, let's get that going. And then these other guys will hit uh, 190 pretty soon. We'll see if we can uh, run multiple integrations at a time. I actually don't remember in Imperatorome if you can do multiple integrations at a time. Perhaps you can, but if you have to wait, that's perfectly fine. It's not going to take too long, ultimately. Right, and then aside from that, uh, I think we're looking solid to go ahead and unpause with army maintenance at minimum, fort maintenance at low. Also, our economy is a bit better than it looks because it hasn't adjusted for the first of the uh, of the year quite yet. I think we're looking solid. We could also switch one god around, but I don't think we really, really uh, need to do that, to be honest. I think we're good to just go ahead and uh, unpause. Just check one more time. Everything looking solid. I think so. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed. It's <sighs> fine, I'll finish. So we do have some slave micro to attend to, so I think what I'll do... Unfulfilled promises. Publius Valerius Saverio has... Uh, registered his official displeasure at our continuing refusal to grant him a position fitting his stature. To make matters worse, he has the support of a number of prominent members of our Senate. Perhaps we should have acted sooner. Uh, so he's losing loyalty fast. We probably need to put this guy in an office. I just completely forgot about this, to be honest. We shall rectify the situation shortly. All right. Um, uh, in terms of stats, um, as noted in the first episode, this guy is not particularly amazing, but we'll find a place for him. Ugh. Um, actually, hold on. He is a scholar, so I can make him a researcher, which I'm sure will count as giving him a position. That's an office. I think that should count. We shall rectify this situation shortly. All right, fine. Uh, who can we afford to kick out? You're a family head, so probably not you. <sighs> uh, here he is. There's just really nobody... I would like to... Okay, fine. Lucius Papirius Garuser is technically probably safest because he is not a family character, so... Fine, we'll have a, a big dip in our research speed for Marshall, but we'll get a trait for that, so that uh, isn't the worst thing ever. All right. This this is an office. You, you count as having an office. Don't question me anymore. Don't declare that you didn't get an office because this is an office. You're being paid a wage. Right? In fact, I can verify that. Yeah, I paid researchers. Yeah, okay, so I now have attended to that, and that should be resolved. So I guess we'll see uh, if I'm right about that. I sure hope I am. 
Okay, let's go ahead now that we've had a monthly tick. Let's do a little bit of slave micro. Well, maybe more than just a little bit. Cancel the sheep for just a sec. I think about 200 gold should be enough to do this, but I, we shall see if I am off about that. Let's just trade with whoever, just for a quick sec. Okay, so we have got uh, some mines finishing. This one's actually done today. It's going to be a bit uh, glitchy, but uh, we'll get some slaves up here. Um, let's see here. Let's disallow slave promotion. Let's move some population up here. So what do we need with the mine? It's going to end up being... 12 slaves needed, so let's move in 8 slaves from elsewhere. Wada, uh, Wolterana would be fine. Let's leave slaves in Wolterra. We'll build a marble mine there later as well. Florentia does have a... no. But we could... actually Florentia would be a pretty good spot for a city eventually. Um, so I may... because it's, it's farmland on the river. Uh, whereas Ad Novus, which is a, a mine and or a mine location, or it could be a mine location, and it's also not on the river, I'll probably keep that as a mine location. Also, did I not destroy this fort? Um, oh no, no, no! I built that fort. Right. I yeah. I'm I'm covering my uh, coastline. That's right. <laughs> I'm remembering now what my own plans were in the past. Anyways, so um, I think for now we can move slaves out of Florentia. We're going to have plenty of grain in the area, so we don't need to have that be a farm. All right, so move pop from Florentia. That's fine. We'll move two in from Pisae, or from Pisae and somewhere else. All right, so now we're going to have... Oh, wait, I miscounted. We have too much. <sighs> um, I mean, I guess that's fine, honestly. We're still below the pop capacity over here, somehow. So that's fine. Um, and then aside from that, we're getting a mine finished over here for iron. I guess we can move some slaves over from there now, so we just need 12. Let's move two over to Ilwa from Walwata, from Pise, from this place here that I don't think has any infrastructure. No, okay. That's fine. Although I prefer to move it from places that are not going to have that infrastructure if possible. Rousselet, uh, Wetolonia, minus five. All right, yeah, so 12 is the correct number here. Disallow slate promotion. Very good. All right, plenty of money left still. Um, where else can I do some building? Well, one thing I should do is I should fortify our Vinium, and basically, uh, uh, this city here is really not an amazing location for a city, <sighs> especially with uh, Colosseum nearby. What I kind of want to do is uh, defortify and uh, reduce Iguium to being just a settlement, and basically build the fort over in Colosseum, which is a city that I'm going to keep, because it's on the river. Um, and then I'll build the fort in Arminium. That's a bit more... It's not as efficient, but it does uh, do the job. Hmm. Also, I'll eventually build a fort in Wissal to protect this mountain passageway. Because uh, also this mountain tile is otherwise honey, which... Yeah, so, so I think that's probably what we're going to do. I'll decide that later. We'll come back to that later. I've, I've plenty, I have the build cost reduction for this entire five-year period, so I don't need to worry about that right quite yet. Let's keep doing slave movement stuff. Um, are my farms here fully supported? Yes. They are. Good. Good, good, good. Um, now we have an iron mine up here at Curace. Or we have an iron location. Let me move some slaves up to Curace in preparation to make it a mine in a couple months. Getting extra copy of iron... We actually, we, have, we already will have an extra copy. We can sell the extra copy for some more money. Um, let's just get the slaves moved, and then we'll build the infrastructure later. Moving slaves out of Roma would probably be okay. I want to leave them there to get promoted. Roma is going to have really good pop promotion speed, most likely. Let's double check. 13.10% is solid for now. I've seen better, but this is uh, pretty good for 10 years in, so I am happy with that. All right, move pops from uh, Wei'i. Well, actually, hold on. There is an argument for sort of redistributing Roma's population around to the sort of neighboring cities to some extent. Definitely isn't a terrible idea. 
Uh, what's the pop promotion speed like over here? 12.60... This place doesn't even have any pops to promote, I guess. Mm -hmm. 23.50, wow, okay. Why is it so different? Oh, it's because a slave is promoting. Slaves promote faster. Yes, yeah, slaves get a bonus. Alright, so... Let me just, uh, squeeze in five more slaves up here from somewhere. From uh, Carcioli, that'd be fine. Don't need slaves with the horses. I need just one more slave now. Um, from Fundi would be fine. Fundi, let's remember, is my... Actually, it has no buildings at the minute. Um, this place here... could become a barracks location. I'm definitely thinking about that. I could really maximize the effect of Borderlands by getting barracks set up in some of these spots. We already have a barracks in uh, uh, Kierke. So the man the freemen here are producing a lot more manpower. Um, in fact, they're producing nearly half the manpower of my smaller cities, which is really incredible, all things considered. Nothing compares to Roma, of course, so... But, um, we could set up something similar over here. This would also give the tile... I haven't talked that uh, yet in this campaign that much about settlement buildings in Terra Domina, but the barracks is one way to specialize this tile for manpower. That being said, ultimately, um, Latium will, I think, uh, really be focused in the endgame on research. Um, although, that being said, research cities still have citizens, and they, all, they have other things too, but they have a focus on citizens, and citizens do produce manpower. So, there's an argument for having Latium, even once I really specialize the province into being research-focused, still have some manpower infrastructure, as we're going to have manpower boosts in effect as well. So, in terms of how to use these tiles that are out uh, as, as settlements and that are not going to be cities, um, we could sort of turn them into, like, small cities by having them be villa estates. But I'd rather just centralize my nobles and citizens into my cities, to be fully honest. I do think that having... Um, I think having barracks would be the better approach. Because I'm happy to have Freeman kind of uh, leave the cities in this province and go out to these barracks. So I should build a barracks in Fundi. We'll come back to that later. Let's just keep doing Slave Micro for now and not get too bogged down. Where else do I have infrastructure for Slave Micro? That's a good question. Um, we have the mine up there. We have the mine there. We have no other mines. Interesting. Okay, what about um, what about farming settlements? I know we have these two. Really? We, so we have no slave infrastructure at all? Okay, interesting. Well, I'm actually open that up again. Where could we get mines? Down here. No other mine locations in our currently controlled territory. Okay, up here we can get a, um, a stone mine. I mean, I may as well. Um, what are we going to need? Probably five. Yeah, we're going to need... Uh, it's going to be a five reduction. So it's going to be twelve... So, let's move some slaves up here. Probably have uh, plenty in this area. Alright, uh, Sarcina can send some over. Um, I'll keep them in Arminium, and Kona can definitely send some over. Alright, 12 slaves. Looks good to me. Then we'll build a mine up here as well, once we have the money for it. And then, in terms of... Uh, oh, I can't look at now because I don't have enough money. Uh, okay, let me do it like this. Fish. We could build the fish thing. Actually, now what I'll do is I'm going to go back to trading, just so this is easier. I'm going to go back to trading for livestock. Then I'm going to let time progress, just so I can get enough money to look and see where I can build more uh, more slave buildings once I'm able to use it with the micro builder. All right, mine and Wawata is done, which means we're going to instantly get two extra copies of marble. That's going to be good for the economy. No soaps wants my olives. Sure. Sounds good to me. All right. And then in terms of my administration, everyone should be focusing on assimilation right now. We do have some loyalty problems in Mega Negratia, but this is sustainable for now. I just need more assimilation. Uh, I definitely just need more simulation. Um, Issa wants my marble. Alea wants my marble, sure. That's fine. 
Oh, I didn't sell land to Epirus. I completely forgot about that. Let's do that now. Um, I'm hoping what this does is it kicks them out of their league. Do I want to wait for them to finish their war first? Don't think I need to do that. Let's just sell them some land. Sell them this stuff here, see what they want for it. Or what they'll give for it. Seven gold. All right. So, if my calculations are right, they're going to become a regional power, and either right now or shortly in the future, they should be kicked out of the defensively because they're too large. Yes, they were kicked out. <sighs> Alright, I'm, I'm actually really glad that worked. Alright, Operation Trick Epirus into becoming too strong has actually succeeded. Pretty pleased with that. All right, so this is good. Um, ultimately, this was just all about trying to make my war with Epirus in a few years easier to do because the war score scaling without all their allies will be uh, better for me. So we're going to leave it like that. Whew. All right, uh, hold on. 21.5k manpower max. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. All right. So I'm going to keep saving my PI. I, it may not be like a super giant priority to switch over my um, my idea, but if we do go to war unexpectedly, and we will be going to war at least in two years, I just kind of want to get this switched back over um, as our ability to spend money on more ships is about to uh, be less good when, um, where is it? when this ends in just about a month. So no need to just maintain this any longer, really. I don't, I'm not going to build any more ships. We've got our our three navies under construction, so we will switch this back over once we can, just so that's not lingering. All right, we've got our first set of ships finished. I'm going to have all of my ships actually gather in Ostia to be organized over there, because it is in a nice central location for my uh, my realm here, so that's good. All right, and then these guys uh, had their opinion lowered because we're doing integration, but once it raises again, we will see what we can do to get that uh, attended to. What's Carthage? If Carthage is still fighting their Iberic War, not going so well for them. Oh, crap. Um, there's pirates. Alright, this ship, I think, is going to die. I completely forgot that pirates would be a thing. Ugh, damn it. Alright. Um, we'll throw in another... I gotta keep an eye on that. We'll throw in another ship. Good thing I haven't changed my thing yet. We still have the effect of it. Do we... Okay, unclear. We shouldn't have it anymore. I think this ends in the monthly tick. Even if it's a bit more expensive. Yeah, I'm... I, whatever. I think it was a... Uh, it was a... Uh, it, we still have the discount, so we'll just add one more Lavernian there. That's a bummer. Um, I need to keep an eye on that. These pirates are uh, causing trouble. They actually just killed another navy, too. So, eyes peeled for piracy. All right, and then once we get a bit more money, I guess we can do it now, actually. So if I were to build farming settlements, so there's like a 100,000 farming settlement locations around here. We can really farm this up like crazy. Um, I'd rather focus on Italia for now, though. What can we do up here? Sens, Gallica, this place is fish. What else? We got uh, wheat down here, or I should say grain. Uh, anything a bit more valuable? I think for now, maybe we will hold off on worrying about Slave Micro too much more. I want a lot of the slaves I captured that are in Ostia and Rome and whatnot to just be promoted up to Freeman. Um, in fact, I'm going to redistribute the slaves a bit. Um, I'm going to send a few more to Ostia so it has more people to promote easily. So let's just move some slaves from Roma. I could have traded for vegetables there, but oh well. In fact, let's move one over to Tiber as well. Move Pop over from Naroma. Just another Roman. I'll keep all the non-Roman slaves in Naroma where the assimilation's really good. But otherwise, I think we're looking fine. Also, manpower is uh, recovering quite well. Across the Adriatic, for many long years, those in control of the Epirote lands have interfered in the region they call Vangration. You got that right. Now, with our territory beginning to overlap with their sphere of influence, it has become all too apparent that there is one solution. If we are ever to be free of their meddling, we must take to the sea and claim their land in order to protect the fair citizens of so-called Magna Gratia, who wish only to land, lead a peaceful existence under our rule. Rome gets a claim on every territory. <laughs> oh, 
I didn't know that this event would happen, but uh, okay, I'll take this. Wow. Well, I mean, interestingly, the suggestion of this event to build up our our navy is what we're literally doing right now. So me and the game are thinking with one brain here. Our eyes are on the horizon. All right. Castle's Bell Eyes on. Also, we finished our one on Tarentum as well. That's pretty good. Um, okay, so now we could go to war with Epirus at will. Don't really think it's a good idea to do that right now for a number of reasons. Also, disloyalty from some subjects. We'll worry about that later. <sighs> Anyways, um, and we're going to do the we're going to do the attack through Tarentum, and that's going to be in five years once we have the much higher marshal of our successor consul Quintus or uh, Quintus Fabius Rulianus as co-consul uh, Quintus Fabius Gergase. What is it? The, what is it with all this, these names lining up? Is this like not a coincidence? We've had double Publiuses, we've had double Appiuses, Appius Claudiuses, and now double Quintus Fabiuses. Is this like actually something? It, this feels like it's not a coincidence, and I don't know why this keeps happening. This is kind of bewildering. All right, uh, whatever. Um, let's go ahead and also just to be uh, safe, because Epirus may <laughs> attack me. Uh, <clears throat> in punishment for me getting these claims. Don't think they will, but they, they technically could. Now that they're regional power, they may feel more confident attacking another regional power. Let's get ordered to retreat, up and going again. We've missed, we've lost out now on the uh, shipbuilding reduction, so no need to keep this thing going. Let's switch this back over, so that's fine. And now we can start saving PI for more useful uses. Uh, yeah, let's proceed. All right. Uh, befitting stature. Publius Valerius Suerio is settling into the new role. There we go. This guy finally is calming down. Whilst he is of the belief that this was only befitting a man of his stature, he has decided to show his gratitude by offering a small donation to the state. How kind. 100 gold. All right, I'll take it. Thank you. Um, let's reinvest this money right away. Right now, of course, we've got a lot of build cost reduction stacking up. So we've got the 15% from the Boney. We've got the 18% from the finesse of uh, Cow... Um, not Cowdex. The finesse of Achaicus. So what is this? 15%, uh, 18%, 23... 43% reduction. And then on top of that, minus 5%. So um, everywhere in the nation at once... It is a uh, 48% reduction. So building should be very cheap right now, to say the least. Let's get to building. Um, right, with our money, let us first and foremost, where did I move those slaves to? Let me get those mine buildings going again. Right up here. Move slaves up here. Um, oh, a slave left here or something. Dang it. All right, let me just, uh, no vegetables, let me just move a slave in here really quick. It's not that expensive from um, Ancona. All right, stop losing slaves. <laughs> Everyone just stay put, please. All right, let's go ahead and build the mine. What's it going to cost? 99 gold for a mine. That's pretty good. Uh, it's going to take us still about um, uh, two years or so. Should be fine. All right, and then we can actually build another mine with how cheap it is. Um, where else? Oh, Curry is this right. That is correct. All right, good. That'll be uh, two more copies of stone and iron, respectively. One from the mine, and then one from the population we've set up, set up there. So that's pretty good. Let's proceed. Senate support is very high. Glad to see it. We got trending up everywhere, except for the popularis who are trending down. Not a huge problem. We can get a big boost with them by confiscating if we need to. Don't think we'll need to, though, hopefully. All right, eyes peeled for pirates, but I think we're okay for now. The pirates aren't here in this tile anymore, so that's at least a, a relief. And now I'm gonna just merge this force together, and then we'll organize our uh, classus uh, fleets. Uh, classus means navy or fleet in Latin, so we're gonna organize them once we uh, once we have everybody here, or until we need to organize that. All right, so we're gonna attempt another uh, movement through the strait over here. Let's hope that the pirates don't catch us this time. We shall see. Everyone just gather up. 
Ostia is going to be quite a uh, crowded port for a while here, but that's fine. Alright, no sign of the pirates. I think we're fine. Oh, the issue is we're going through the open sea and not through the coastal sea, which is safer. Alright, well, that's fine. Choices are being made. I guess this is technically the faster route. No funny business, please. Fleet maintenance is at low. That's correct. Good job, game. You knew what I wanted. Can count on you. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to keep an eye on you, Everus. Get in my eyeliner. There we go. Okay. Um, they also finished their war against that revolt. So they seized a little bit of territory, I think. Um, actually, I'm not sure what happened with that war. Uh, wh whatever. Um, Alright, I'm just... It's, just, it's better not to look, honestly. It's better not to look. Alright, um... Let's, let's just proceed. We could spend our PI on a law change. I am thinking a bit about one of these ones here. Our commerce economy is powering up, but it's not quite there yet. We could give it a big boost with a, um... A change to export or import value at the minute probably probably export value would be worth more but um also that being said manpower recovery speed five percent is pretty good so we could just keep it honestly all right expansion of the tribes today's tribes are much changed from the strict geographic constituencies of the past now consisting of a vertical slice of citizens from any one of the provinces although there are only four tribes within the city of aroma itself the rural tribes are a valuable source of political legitimacy and play an important role in organizing the bureaucracy of the state, from electing local magistrates to passing motions by the tribune of the plebs. Rome has grown far beyond the borders of Latium, and with the large increase in population, there are again calls to uh, instantiate more tribes for the Republic. In response, the Senate is debating the commission of two further tribes named uh, Quirina and Wellina, respectively. Um, so if we go for this, we gain for five years province loyalty plus 0.05. That's pretty handy right now. And immigration in Roma, local pop growth, that's really good. That's for, what's that, 20 years? Or go for this, which has just negatives. Why would I not go for this? Maybe there's new events that pop up that are problematic, but I'm happy to grow our tribal, our tribal system. Works for me. Our system requires granularity. Who in the world picks the second option? <laughs> As, they, as a wise man once said, with the tribe, I must vibe. Right, twisting the knife, uh, Appius Claudius Gaicus, for reasons not only to himself, has begun to view Quintus Fabius Gurgis, who is, uh, I think, our incoming co-consul uh, in five years, uh, with jealousy and distrust, even having them in the same room as one another is bound to result in hostility. What? Why are you rivaling this guy? What are you doing? All right. Um... This is not a huge problem, necessarily. We still have him on Scheme Influence, so he's not trying to kill that guy, so that's good. You, just keep it together. Rival of Ruler. This is still fine. He's still pretty loyal, ultimately. So, we'll just leave it as it is. Goofy. Alright, Rome is number one. Very good. Crete, as usual, is doing quite well. Crete often overperforms in these score rankings because of uh, their st low starting situation to bite her. Pretty good. Another round of ships are finished. Let's bring them in. So now at this point we definitely have enough uh, ships to transport a uh, small force over to Corsica. So that's good to see. All right, ice peeled for pirates. If I spot them too late, I may lose another ship, but I can just build more ships. Even without the extra naval cost reduction, this is still quite cheap uh, to build these uh, smaller ships. The coming of the city of Ariminium. Our extension of new privileges and investments into the local infrastructure have seen our medium grow from relative humility into a true Umbrian city. While it still has some way to go before it can rival the great cities of our age, the past two years have ushered in a new era of growth and urbanization in the territory. All right, so our medium is finished. Very good. It is a wine-producing tile. That's fine. Um, I don't have enough money yet to restructure my forts here yet. Plus, I want to um, keep... Maybe keeping this fortified until I get this territory may be better as well. Uh, 
But I would like to dismantle this just so the population moves over to Clusium and Arminium, if possible. That being said, uh, hill style on the water isn't necessarily a terrible place for a city, but to be honest, um, Arminium already has two good city locations at Arminium and in Kona. And this place here, even though... Well, that being said, I, I could keep it as a fort just so I've got extra fort coverage around here. Don't know if that's super necessary, though, in the long term. Once I take this territory, I want to fortify the mountain in, in Wisal, also to limit uh, movement around here without getting caught up there. And the mountains are pretty good places to get forts. And that way, uh, Pise will have the fort, and then Wisal covers it over here. And then over on this side, this entire area is covered by the Arminium fort. I think we can probably get away. We can get away with that. There's no bard power in here, really. Oh my gosh. Anyways, sorry, I just got distracted <laughs> noting that there's no barb power in these mountain tiles. Um, so Iguium as a fort doesn't seem to really be super necessary. I'd rather redistribute this population elsewhere, to be honest. So let's wait a bit, and then we'll... Actually, we could defortify it now. Then we'll wait a bit and get our some more money from monthly income, and then we'll get this at, uh, attended to. Mine and Ilwa is done. That means more resources to sell. Very good. One of these days, someone will buy my resources, but it is not today. There we go. Here we go. All right, now let's trade with uh, someone who I'm not going to fight. Dabunia wants to reach me. All right, we'll trade with Dabunia. Looks good. And then Sapontum. Maybe somebody else that's not. Okay, it's the Sinones. We'll trade with them. Sure. Ooh. All right, I gotta look. <laughs> like, what's happening over here? As usual, Ptolemaics are muscling in in a big way. That's their standard playbook. Selikids are really not doing well in this game. These guys are getting killed by Armenia. That's pretty embarrassing for them. Hmm. Well, all right. Nothing to be done about that. Hmm. Who's that first fighting? They're fighting Kawia and Darcia. All right. They're just expanding up into Illyria. Nothing too surprising there. I will eventually make landfall over in Greece, which is what my that event wants me to do, our claims on the Greek areas, and also what Rome's mission trees overall will want it to do. But for now, like I really genuinely don't think there's much value in trying to get into the Greek area much further until I get Carthage under control. If anything, um, being able to have naval supremacy for Carthage will make my life a lot easier. So especially if after our first Punic War, we're at least able to secure the peninsular portion that they control, what I really want is to kick them out of Sicily. If I can get Carthage out of Magna Graecia, even if they still have their uh, Italia holding over here, um, with my naval supremacy, I can basically uh, have this area effectively under control with naval supremacy, and I can basically just box Carthage away from Mega Negratia, and then I can turn my attention to Greece. But for now, Carthage is the bigger existential threat. I'm going to fight Epirus first to get them out of Mega Negratia, which is going to be a bit easier. But once I, I kick Epirus back over to Greece, I'm, I'm fine just to leave them alone and turn my attention fully to Carthage, like, completely. All right, Bountiful Harvest. Word has arrived that this year's harvest was especially good in the territory of Satakula, Whilst the merchants may be holding their heads in their hands, the people rejoice at the plummeting price of bread. Ooh, okay, so we could do a couple things here. Three stability would be handy. We have uh, no stability trend at the minute with our AE. We'll soon be positive, but it's currently none. Or 100 gold and approval. I think in this situation, I actually want to maximize my use of those build cost reduction modifiers from everything that I have for it at the minute. So the Bonnie leadership and our actual console. So let's get the gold to spend on more building. All right. Um, and then let's go ahead and trade for stone. All right, did I trade for stone before building those other buildings? I don't remember. Uh, that may have been a micro mistake. It was only a very small micro mistake if I forgot to do that. But let's trade for stone now and do some more building. 
all right, so let's uh, get to it here. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, revoke city status here. I'm trying to lose my tyranny, but uh, this hill city is just an affront to everything I value. <laughs> it's kind of an extreme way to say that, but I just I really dislike uh, like not well suited locations for cities. It just kind of bothers me. So you are getting demoted. You will have to redistribute. I'm going to send some slaves away. Um, let's send slaves over to uh, Clusium. Or let's send them over to Arminium, actually. That's probably a better place for them to go. All right, send them over from Aguium. There's a lot of slaves here because we captured slaves that were sent to Aguium because it was the capital. So let's just uh, send some folks over. Oh, not, not Sentium, no. Ah, all right. I have no mouth and I must scream. All right. Uh, this place doesn't have a farm anyways, so... I actually could build a farm here if we really wanted to. Also, I should have traded for vegetables. More more micro-mistakes. Why why stop with them? Let's just keep it going, I guess. Alright. Build a fort over there. And then Clusium. I probably should fortify this too. Uh, yeah, let's fortify that too. Alright, and then that's all the money we have for buildings at the minute. Let's switch back over to livestock. It's fine. It's only about two gold or so that I am missing out on for each slave that I move without vegetables, so really is not the end of the world. I'm just a perfectionist. <laughs> it's not good, folks. Don't be a perfectionist. Wouldn't recommend it. It just results in constant disappointment. And then occasional immense bliss, but mostly constant disappointment. All right, we've got a pretty sizable little uh, partially built navy at this point, so that's pretty good. Most of our triremes, or most of our librarians are finishing up now, so that's handy. Um, yes. Economy is still doing quite well, even with the naval maintenance, so that's good to see. And then Etruria has allied with uh, in Gaunia. Oh, they're in a defensive league. With whom? With the uh, the people over on... This is interesting. Okay. I am spotting an opportunity to actually conquer all of those tribes as well as the other stuff. But that makes this war a bit larger scale than I had planned for. We certainly have the naval supremacy. I'm sure these tribes don't exactly have big navies. Yeah, no surprise there. Um... This, like, this island is very heavily fortified, so actually taking this would be kind of a slog. And they're all going to have better marshal than my actual leader. Um, ugh, okay. The, the question is, do I actually want to take all this territory? This will give me a direct border with Carthage, which is probably not good to do flippantly. Hold on. 53 loyalty. I think we might be able to do something here. I think what we might be able to do is fully kick Carthage out of Italia too. 53 loyalty, so Inspire Disloyalty brings him down to 33. Um, and then if I befriend him, I think it lowers further. I'm not 100% sure, but this is probably the best chance I have to go for something like this. And if it coincides with me taking this territory, that would... Um, yeah, I think we can do something here. This is a risk because Carthage is not going to be happy if we even do these actions, let alone if we uh, seize this territory peacefully. And retaliation from Carthage is not to be underestimated. We definitely are not in a position again to fight Carthage in a regular war. However, with my navy under construction, I think we'll, we'll soon be able to start at least like mildly contesting them. We're really a few years away from having the full strength here. That being said, um, if we were to... Uh, hold on, where is it? It's with this character. If we were to do Entice Governor, they get claims on the provinces. They probably have claims on this stuff anyways. So, actually, I'm not sure if they have a claim on this by default, but Carthage currently doesn't have a claim on us. So that should be noted. So this would give them a claim on me. They're preoccupied getting um, defeated by Iberic tribesmen. So maybe we could pull this off. Maybe Carthage... Here's the thing we need to do. We need to time this move with an alliance with someone like Massilia, who won't agree to it, but they may agree to it soon. Having an ally that is near Carthage may be the move we need to make in order to 
hold Carthage back. That being said, Massilia could drag us into wars over in Africa. We could just not, you know, send troops over to get involved. But if we ally with somebody that actually... Well, that being said, like I said in the previous episodes, a Massilian ally, although it looks pretty good, does potentially open us up to Carthage getting easy war score from Massilia. That being said, I don't really care if Carthage... What Carthage does in Africa. Africa is not within my realm, my sphere of influence right now. Like, it will eventually be, but for now it is not um, something we can really contest for. As, even if Carthage uh, just completely smacks Massilia around, we may be able to still use the time in the First Punic War to basically rush our way in and get control of Magna Gratia. And if by that point we've got naval supremacy, I think this is doable. We need what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do this action only after we take this territory. So I'm going to go all the way and I'm going to try and take this territory. Oh, man, there's just so much to do. <laughs> I just have so many things to focus on at one time. So with that noted, um, Gaikas with his three marshals not too impressive for these these wars, but this will have to do. We'll have the numbers advantage, and we can bring along um, the Magna Gratia governor Lepidus for some additional marshal. That we'll have to do for now. Anyway, we're going to take our action on, uh, was it February February 7th of next year? So we'll get ready for that in a couple months. Probably August we'll start getting ready for that. Alright, so now let's just save our money, just to be on the safe side. I can also assign my first uh, Admiral to what will eventually be one of the three fleets for now. It'll, it'll be the combination fleet. We'll have to make use of the, our partially built navy for these purposes, but that's fine. Got plenty of ships now. Lots of manpower in reserve as well, that's pretty good. Alright, don't die to the storm, please. Go back to Ostia and get repairing. Yeah, this is a opportunity I wasn't expecting to have, but this actually works for us. I think we can take on all these guys at once. <sighs> Even my, my peaceful consular term has a, a little bit of a little bit of war. Can't be can't be helped. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get organized here. So um, I can probably wait on the fleet maintenance a bit, but I probably should just start paying for it. Should not need fort maintenance in this war necessarily, but I probably should pay for that too. Let's just start ramping up everything. We've got the economy to sustain this, so it's not that expensive actually, all things considered. I think this may not be fully accurate. I guess we'll see. Um, as for fleet maintenance, what are we looking at? That's a bit more severe. And then let's go to increased army pay. Still plus 10 in the green is totally fine. Also, we don't have a fort over here now, but that's fine. We can just get, go for this. All right, let's get our armies organized and moving. I know I'm a little early for this, but this is fine. Uh, let's raise the integration force and send them north. What's your loyalty like? 49. That's fine. Let's uh, let, let's hold on. Yeah, let, let's raise the um, the uh, Italian force or the Italia force up in Pise and get them organized. Um. I think what I'm going to do, by the way, is I'm going to have, let's see here, with your higher marshal, I need to get um, Aritim sieged, that is a priority here. So um, I think what I'm going to do is have you, I'm gonna, I need to make use of your good marshal as best I can, so let's split you into four sort of siege units. Alright, so we're going to make use of these four sort of copies of Lepidus to get his better marshal strategically in certain spots. I prefer to be able to sack places like Alalia and whatnot, but for now, we're going to focus on this. So let's bring you up. Just just walk, I think. It's fine. Um, actually, come to Ostia and then board the ships. We're going to send the ships over to Pise for now. <clears throat> Yeah, I could have actually waited a few more months, but I always forget how long it takes. Alright, since they're moving separately, the cab are getting ahead. That's perfectly fine. You are over the supply limit. That is lovely. 
Really? Up here? Okay. All right, let's get you organized as well. So what I want to probably do is have a large force kind of just hold things down in this area here. What I really need is for the Etrurian army, which won't be very large, to get killed quickly. That would be preferable. Um, now these guys here may ship over their guys on boats, or they may walk through um, Ganuatia, who they don't have a <clears throat> military access with, but they could get one. We shall see. <clears throat> But, what do we do here? Um, I think I think step one is to kill... So Etruria's capital... Where is Etruria's capital? Actually, where is Etruria's capital? Oh, their capital's at Alalia. So they're going to raise their army probably at Alalia. That changes our math a little bit. So what we do now is, I think what we do is we leave. So, okay, here's the plan. We're going to leave behind a force mostly of light infantry. So let's leave, uh, let me leave, just to be on the safe side, let me leave behind, um, yeah, I'm gonna leave behind 2K light infantry to do the siege at um, Aratim under the leadership of um, uh, Lepidus with the heavy infantry, just so we have a reasonable army on the land. Everybody else will basically head over to Alalia. So everybody that's not you come here, and then you guys actually come on down as well. We're gonna actually just depart from Ostia. Actually, no, let's depart from Kose. That's a bit closer. I want to go to Kose. You head over to Kosei. You head to Kosei. And everyone that's not the heavy infantry head to Kosei. Yeah, because I think... I think Atrori will probably raise their army in Alalia. I want to land over on Corsica and basically do the war over here. Um, I don't know what uh, Iguania is going to be packing, but it's not going to be much. So we should be able, with 2.5k, with the 7 marsh, we should be fine on the continent to do it like that. All right. I'm just going to use this uh, sort of partially finished fleet as a navy, um, although it's now a little oversized, so I will reorganize it slightly. Um, this is done. We can send one hex ray over, so we can have at least five hex rays, so what we'll do is uh, create kind of a temporary navy from our partially built navies. I'm going to have... no, not like that. There we go. You are going to be um, Classes 1. We're going to sort of have this be wrong in the composition, but this is fine for now. Classes 1. We'll, we'll, actually, we'll just call this uh, Classes 1 Kosei, just so I know where its main port is for this war. But uh, we're going to have the other ships just kind of be in reserve for now. Don't want to get too complicated here. And then we'll have the 5th Hex Array join that, and we'll have a 25-5 composition for this uh, war specifically. In Classes 1 Kosei, we're going to give you a commander. Um, what do we want to do here? We could have our co-console command. That's interesting. Anything with uh, ship bonuses, perhaps? No. Um, this would perhaps give him uh, more loyalty, and he's a good martial character. Okay, we'll have uh, Caudex command this force. Don't get any funny ideas, my dude. Keep your loyalty up, please. All right, this looks like a plan. All right, everyone just gather here. And um, incidentally, we won't be able to transport all of our forces at one time because we're dealing with uh, 31 cohorts. Deselect you, merge this force together. Um, 31, I, I would rather transport everyone out here, wouldn't I? Yeah, so once the Hexer arrives, we'll have one additional ship go with it as kind of an escort just to carry the, the 31 guys together. I think that'll be the plan. So what's your weight like over here? Still attrition? That's fine, you've got food to eat. Just, uh, just chill there. We have an oratory advance. All right, our administration has expanded enough to implement one free innovation. Also, country civil level plus 0.50. Very nice. Okay, so what do we want now? Um, 
Could be worth starting to go into naval stuff here, but don't think we need that quite yet. There's a lot of good stuff we can go for instead. Definitely a lot of good stuff. <sighs> um, we could go for this. I think this might be a Rome-specific one or a Republic-specific one. <coughs> Cursus Publicus, Tyranny and Stab. And this is pretty good to get early on, especially the stab part. Uh, yeah, tyranny reducing effects are pretty uncommon. So let me go for Cursus Publicus. Not very exciting, but this is a good, just kind of staple tech to get. A state regulated courier system used for conveying messages, packages, and even people between forts and important stations throughout the Roman Empire. Couriers, usually traveling by horse drawn carts, could travel up to 80 kilometers per day, enabling efficient administration and communication to all corners of the nation. All right. Very good. This will help get things under control. We progress down to number two. All right, that's uh, going to be happening now and then. All right, good. You're still a regional power. Can't believe that worked. <laughs> that was uh, quite nice that that worked. All right, the hex ray is done. Let's get our temporary uh, first classes uh, organized here. We're going to eventually have a reorganization of our classes. Class I. Granaries raided. We have received word from local officials in the province of Apulia that several important food, several important provincial food stockpiles have been looted by malcontents owing to the general, for the contempt of the government across the area. It seems they hope to make tensions worse by forcing a hungry people to action. In any case, it will not be cheap to replace the stolen goods. I am happy to pay money to get loyalty with my governor and also a loyalty in Apulia, which doesn't have great loyalty at the minute. So we'll just replace the stockpiles. Don't need to even look at the other options. I am happy to pay the money myself. All right. So now let's get our... So now, hold on. Okay, you stop adding yourself here. All right, so you are now my organized first fleet. We're going to have you... Uh, sort of lead the way, allow attachments. We're gonna attach um, this one additional Liburnian to the fleet just for transportation purposes, but otherwise it's not gonna be put to use like that. Um, I guess I could use my ships for some... I could be using my ships here to do blockading. That's not a bad idea otherwise. Ah... Uh, hmm. Come back to that later. Everyone just chill here. Get ready for war. Scholar of the Divine. Uh, Virginia Aula has by all accounts remained a scholar of the Divine Woman for much of her life. It caused some embarrassment, therefore, when she was discovered extorting a local temple to an egregiously unreasonable degree. Before reprimanding Virginia Aula, Aulia, it must be said that it would be expedious to our efforts to influence her if we were to brush this under the table. Could gain some corruption on Caicus, which at the minute we uh, have plenty of anti-corruption. I think since we're going to cycle out of him, we're, this is probably okay. I do want the extra PI. Let's go for it. Very well. Alrighty. Um, so now, I could do a law change. Could do a law change. And actually, ironically, switching from the anti-corruption tribal assembly to senatorial endorsement is feeling like kind of a good idea. We uh, have plenty of approval to, uh, to kind of soften the blow for a change like this. And getting more PI would be handy. Um, alternatively, yeah, I'm not going to touch that. Over here, we could switch this around. Man perk over speed is quite nice, though, not going to lie. But we could power up our commerce economy. Commerce economy is still not quite strong enough to really justify that, I don't think. So I think we leave that alone. Let's spend the PI on, let's see here. You know what? Um, I'm going to be really conservative and actually just go for Divine Sacrifice. It's not that expensive right now. Um, yeah, it is It is quite a bit cheaper uh, than it would be. So let's go for a Divine Sacrifice just to get some extra stab change, just preemptively. And then let me save the rest of my PI for province management, which will be needed soon. <laughs> All right. Once Carthage finishes their war, I'm going to be a little bit concerned, but they seem to be struggling a bit. I don't know what their deal is. They are building up their ships, by the way. I said that this is probably what they would do. 
Fugitives cross the border, fleeing the dreadful war with Pontus, a number of important dignitaries have managed to escape to our lands, hoping to find refuge. Our advisors recommend against giving them asylum due to the fragile political circumstances in our region, and indeed, much favor may be gained with Pontus if we finish the job for them. I don't care about these guys, I'm happy to just kill them. That is the Roman way, to be honest, so no need to uh, be too concerned about that. Alright, so... Once we get to January, I'm going to go ahead and get my guys loaded on the ships and organized, because we can, of course, land uh, right as the war is declared in Alalia with our entire force here. Alright, we will do just that. Epirus finished their war, and they conquered a bunch of territory. No big surprises there. Let's get enough speed to, and get organized. So, uh... I want to make sure that we're put on the right boats here, so you guys get out of the way. Alright. You guys get on the boats. You guys... Oh, shoot. Hold on. I gotta split it apart slightly. Let's put the cab as a separate guy. Alright, you guys get on there, and then you guys get on the support boat. There we go. Perfect. Everyone... Or, no. Everyone come over here. You guys return to Kosei. Alright, I think we're going to be good. This is a trial run of our new Navy morale. Let's see what we're dealing with here. 3.83 with increased pay because of our reduction in morale. Wait, no, that's my that's my army. 2.85, or 83 rather. Ooh, that's not very good. <laughs> that's pretty bad. Let me look at my, my uh, feudatory's morale for comparison. Okay, they're not paying their ships, so I can't see... Anybody else that's paying their ships? No, I can't see anyone. Alright, whatever. Naval morale does tend to be lower than land morale, so maybe this is not as bad as it looks, but it certainly doesn't look good. <laughs> Alright. Um, pirates, keep away. This should be fine. We're just going to walk over from here and just, uh, yeah, we'll just do a normal sort of land battle or land fight over here. Should be perfectly fine, especially with this strength over here. Alright, the rest of our ships keep gathering in Kosei, just in case we need them. Hopefully we won't, but we shall see. And then February 7th, we go to war. Looking good. Onion Harvest Surplus. My console, incredible news from our fields. The onion harvest is significantly exceeding expectations. With the surplus, we are sure to make a tidy profit, which, should we not use the fruits ourselves, at least no one will starve this year. We will eat it all. Onions for everybody. Um, this is a pretty good modifier. Five, uh, five years of pop growth, Freeman happiness, and slave happiness, which at the minute I think is going to be quite handy, or 54 gold. Um... I kind of want the happiness and growth bonuses for five years. Let's go for that. I think we don't need the gold critically at this minute for anything specific. All right, truce is done with Etruria. Let's go for it. So we're going to be taking, um, we're going for the claim of Ariminum. All of my feudators join in, all of their allies and defensive league partners join in, all according to plan. Here we go. All right, so. Here's a very important little trick we're going to do here. We're going to land our main army in Alalia to siege that down instantly, while our other force here will land um, in... Uh, let's land them in the Rubra, just so they're not... I want to sack this with my main army. Alalia has a fair bit of population, and I don't mind uh, damaging it a little bit. It's going to be my capital here eventually, because it's the best tile on Corsica, but I'm happy to damage it on the way in to make some extra money. May as well. And then up here, you guys, let me go ahead and have you lead the way, and I'll have this force follow. I'll just come on in and get to work sieging that down. Um, one problem could be if Etruria hires mercenaries, or if um, Igwan, uh, Ig Igaunia hires mercenaries as well, because I don't have any way to use my naval supremacy over these guys to hold the mercs back. We may have to send a relief force back over to the mainland if that does happen. We shall see what exactly ends up happening here. We're going to probably land onto the Etrurian army, I assume. I guess we'll see in a minute what we're dealing with here. 
Alright, we've got their fort under siege. These guys have arrived. Okay, there's the Etrurian army, so as expected, nothing too serious, so we don't need to even have these guys come in to help. We will just uh, come in with the main army and uh, kill these guys in a matter of two days. Here's another Etrurian force. Oh, this must be their Sisalpine Gaul levy. Nothing to worry about there. These guys will just probably... I don't even know what they're going to do. Not much. <laughs> They're just going to walk away. All right, Battle of uh, Alali. I didn't even have time to look at it. This was a very clean stack wipe. That is a, that's a generous ruling by the game there. I'm not going to complain, but zero losses on a landing attack into a city. Damn. That is, uh, that's nice to see. All right. So we're going to just sack this. It's no fort, so we can do this really quick. And now, with my ships, what do we do? I'm going to go ahead and send... The reinforce classes um, back over to just live in Kosei with the other support ships. I'm just going to have this ship basically hang around this area. Let's go and protect our crossing here, just so we have some line of sight in the area. But otherwise, I think we're fine. Alright. These guys are... I don't know what they're doing. Mystery behavior. I guess they're going... Oh, you know, they're going around the fort covers. That's what they're doing. Clever, clever. All right, well, they may be going for Canusium. What I can do is if they are going this direction, I can send a force from um, Aratim to go and destroy them. They have uh, low morale, and they, ha <coughs> and they have um, low martial on that governor, so should be perfectly safe. Integration of Marzia. Our client Marzia has long upheld Roman ideals in a fair and even-handed manner. It is a matter of course, therefore, that their eventual integration into our state uh, is to be a cause for jubilation. The Marzian elite have been instrumental in facilitating this union, and many are hoping to find a place within our government. So we could bring in some of these characters. These guys are Roman and Hellenic, so it would be fine to bring them in to our government here. Um, they're going to be minor characters. I can't see the kin, but I can see at least the, the family heads to see if they have any good stats. 9-7, uh, Tertius Aurelius could actually be quite a good governor, potentially, so let me go ahead and invite Sanctuary, or offer Sanctuary to him. Lose a bit of popularity on Appius, but, um, we'll gain four popularity. I think we're about to get some popularity from sacking, so this should be fine. Let's bring this guy in, just in case we need a solid governor. The great families of Marzia. Oh, wait, here we go again. We can, uh, offer it to more people, I guess. So it's sort of like the, um... The conquest version where you can uh, sort of let the families be in your nation. Um, Decius Sergius, who was the former chief of Marcia, I believe. He does have good marshal. <sighs> he's, he's a Roman. All right, we'll let him in. And then the last guy here um, is not very impressive, so we just, uh, we'll just decline to do that. Oh, oh, he just disappeared into obscurity, so there he goes. All right, that's fine. Sacking of uh, Alal Alalia. Um, Appius Claudius Caicus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Alalia. The enemy fleeing disgrace and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war like that cause those back in Roma to admire Appius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. This one slave sent to the Sadakula, one to Capua. This should be a Nunchal Hide situation, and it looks like it is. Very good. All right. Um, let's head on down and go, let's, let's have you guys head on over to Tribula, and you guys go and sack, uh, oh, Tribula blocks it, that's right, duh. Although it won't block it from a naval landing, so let's actually have you stay here. I'm going to pick these guys up with the boats and just bring them over to land at Faucian to get that siege, and then we'll go over and join for the Tribula siege, basically staying kind of centralized. I have the numbers advantage to be sure, but it doesn't hurt to stay organized as best as possible. Oh, there's a naval battle happening out here. Alright, first naval battle of the campaign that I can call, aside from the pirate one, but we don't count that. Oh, it's the Etrurian fleet. Are they going to get away in time? Dang, alright, we're going to force them out once we take this, so that will be fine. So you come around and pick these guys up. Fort of March. I'm just going to stand there. Alright, I can't do too much about that. Um, I guess I could kill them. I, yeah, let me just do that, actually. I'm going to leave a skeleton crew behind. This should be fine with the numbers. 
go uh, get these guys out of here. Oh, we got the... These guys are here already, right. Alright, on the boats. Let's land over here, get this stuff. There is the uh, Lugui Donancia army roaming around. That is fine. We'll be arriving shortly. In fact, we'll be arriving right now. Land here, 31st of March. Very good. These guys are fleeing for their lives, as they should. Chase them probably into Pisna. Yeah, they're, they're off to go into Pisna from here because they're entering fort coverage. So they have just uh, doomed themselves to death. Alright, I could have done a slightly more comprehensive landing with um, sieging everything, and I probably should go ahead and just do that now. I didn't really organize for this very uh, coherently, but... That's illegal. How are you doing that? Oh, I guess they're going into their own land, so never mind. That is legal. Wait. No shot. What? Same marshal. We've got four times their numbers. I don't care that I'm crossing river to hills. I'm winning that fight. <laughs> hey, I don't even mind. Stupid game. Doesn't know what it's doing. All right, so I think what we do here is... Let's actually, I guess better late than never, let's organize ourselves into a proper assault force, or a proper invasion force here. So, let me go ahead and split this guy apart. Uh, one, two, three, maybe one, two, one, two, one, two, one. So you guys are going to go ahead over to the fort, and this force here will be one entity for fort sieging. Actually, you guys go here, because we can sack it as a capital, potentially. And then you, I'm just going to split in half. And then half of you are going to go back onto the ships, um, which will soon be in naval combat, which is fine. Actually, well, no, uh, no I'm, I've, I've had situations where I've lost armies, even when one ship dies in a naval combat, that looks like it will be a complete blowout, so I'm not taking risks. You guys, um, just wait here for a sec. That's the plan. All right, here we go. The game has reconsidered how combat works. Now we will get a stack wipe. There we go. Good job. Head on down there. Sacking of Fauciane. Appius Claudius Caecus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Fauciane. The enemy fleeing disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war likely cause those back in Roma. To admire Appius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Slave sent to Satakula. Alright, none shall hide. Okay, so let's wait for this naval battle to happen, then we'll ship out the guys. We can just ship them both out, actually. Right, we're gonna catch these guys as well with this force here. That's great. Um, in fact, I could send reinforcements over, but I don't think that's necessary. They should be fine on their own. Naval battle should be completely free. It was completely free. We actually captured a trireme as well. And we captured their admiral. Very good. This trireme, I have a mission for you. It's called Scout at the Bottom of the Ocean. Thank you. Alright. Um, you guys, back on the boats. Actually, no. Let the boats come to you. It's be faster. Not a stack wipe, but it was a pretty good fight. They're gonna run off. We'll get this under siege now. All right, you guys, um, get on the boats. And the boats are gonna swing around here. We're gonna drop one force off to go and grab a car race, and then the other force will uh, work, and they'll merge together, and we'll probably do an assault at Sulki Tiersen. And now with this force here, give it to me. This is probably assaultable. Oh yeah, definitely assaultable, especially with the reinforcements helping out. Second of May. Martial advance uh, to three. Morale of armies, morale of navies increase, but also legion and navy maintenance cost increase. Our administration expanded, has expanded enough to implement one free innovation. Okay, um, I think I should go for so many good options around here let's uh sort of be realistic here a little bit um 
it might be worth going for some discipline bonuses, especially before the Etrurian and Carthaginian Wars, where actual uh, melee combat or actual like land combat will be a bit tricky. So I at least want to maybe get to professional training, even if I don't go for the Legion, <clears throat> the Legion Law. Getting the 10% discipline from these two would be pretty good. And I do have two more coming in um, soon. I think we should probably go for this. Yeah, we can't play around here. So basic training, providing new recruits with the most basic of training may at least let them survive the first few swings. Extra starting experience. Not too important at the minute, but it will add up later. All right, we've arrived here. All right, I think we can maybe catch these guys in a massive attack. 8th of May. Ooh, we're going to catch these guys. That And these guys may actually stop retreating here. That's perfect. Massive landing attack over here in Tiersenia. And then we'll redistribute to go uh, see to this stuff down. This guy here can probably do an assault as well. I'm thinking about it. Maybe I'll wait. I don't want to go too crazy with assaults. I, I have... I don't want to overextend myself, and there are a lot of forts over here, so let's just uh, play it cool. Speaking of assaults, this one's nearly done. Siege of Artem is one. No sack for me. That's fine. So you're basically now finished up here. I guess we may as well go grab this for war score and then get to work on Portos Veneris, but we should not be in danger up here anymore, hopefully. I guess we'll see what these guys do. These guys arrive 8th of May. Let's land and see what uh, we can get up to here. All right, those guys did get away, or I don't know. If, I think they. This is a different force here, but anyways, this should be perfectly fine. Not a stack wipe, but should be a very good fight. I mean, you guys actually do need to stay in that spot. Battle of Tiersenia. Pretty good trade, all things considered. We're, we're attacking into hills, so we shouldn't be too uh, we shouldn't be too um, assured of a instant win. So let's um, actually let's do this the other order. You go up here and get that under siege. You swing around and then land like this, and then we'll bring them back together and do an assault together at Sulky Tiersen to get it under control. This siege is going pretty well, so we're just going to let that progress. Oh, hello, enemy forces. This is an awkward uh, meeting of the mind situation. We're going to attack into the hills. That's probably fine. Oh, well, I mean, it, it is fine with the numbers difference. Actually, no, it's not fine. Our morale is really low. Uh, okay, they stopped moving. That's good. They, we would have won that, but it would have been expensive. So let's just uh, let our morale build up before we do anything too crazy here. All right, the fortress is under siege. 9th of June for you. And you just wait here and get your morale back up. Then we'll put this under siege and we'll be fine. All right, um, this navy should remain in this tile, I think. Yes, just for now, for maximum flexibility. All right, get a breach. Nope, defenders desert, though. That's pretty good. Good. You get to work on that uh, fort, just so you're being used for something useful. Uh, Feudatories will help out, too. Also, I didn't look at my new Marzian territory, but it's just these two tiles here. We've got a Council of Elders that can go, and we've got a fort here. Not the word, it's not a bad idea to have a fort up in these mountains just for extra protection. Um, and this spot here is the right distance from Capua for what it's worth. It's a bit close to, actually, yeah, it's a bit close to Histonium. Um, I'll just build, I think we don't need fortification in the middle of the peninsula. It's more on the coastline, so we'll just leave it at that. Capital is moving around and moved over to Peltuidum. That's fine. Um, let's see if we can do any more integration. Oh, we definitely can. Who's next? Um, I kind of want to get Nucaria integrated next. Um, let's see if they will start. They will. It's going to be about uh, two and a half years. Looks good to me. The Italic local power of Nucaria. Let's get that going. Um, and can I integrate other people too? I actually can. Okay. Let me also integrate um, Pelignia as well. This is uh, even sooner. It's just about two years. And then can we, can we also do it with those guys? Can I just integrate everyone who's agreeing to it? Oh, I guess I can integrate these guys too. I thought I'd have to do it sort of step by step, but all right, we'll just get it going for all these guys. This one requires uh, the end of the year and this one requires 64. Okay, 
That's fine. Alright. Mine in forum uh, Poppily is done. And then Curry's. So these mines should already have extra copies getting uh, uh, sort of prepared now, because I, I pre-established that. Alright, we have a fight over here. This should be fine. Oh my gosh, a million things just happened. Alright, that fight was a stack wipe. And then, we've also put the fort under siege, and then also we won down here. Very good. Now we can come down and do probably an assault here, teamed up. We shall see what we end up choosing to do, though. Ships keep gathering in Kosei. Just to be, uh... Actually, we can probably gather in Ostia again. I think that's fine, honestly. Also, at this point, only the um, hex arrays in Ostia are being built. The very last, uh... Replacement Libranian is finishing as well, so everything will just centralize in Ostia at that point. Alright. Everyone's here. Um, let's wait for one monthly tick just to be on the safe side. Actually, no, these guys are, are partial garrison. This is going to be completely fine. Let's just assault this and get this cleared up here. There's only one more fort to go after this, so we can be a bit more aggressive here. The sacking of Sulky Tiersons. Very good. Sent a slave to Kosei. Appius Claudius Caicus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Sulky Tiersen. The enemy fleeing disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war are likely to cause those back in the Roma to admire Appius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Uh, what kind of population do we have here? Natural Hyde is going to be fine. Killing these Sardons will make our lives a lot easier once we're trying to assimilate everybody. Alright, everyone head over to Hydata, the sort of de facto capital of the island, to be sure. And soon these guys can join in for a bit more. We have to also, I guess we have to get uh, Gurulis as well. We'll worry about that later. Um, Alea wants my iron. No, not selling to Alea. Somebody else. Someone I'm not going to fight. Uh, Bonnie Agenda, End of Tyranny. A large majority of the Senate has gathered around Publius Valerius Sowerio. Uh, this is my... Why is this guy in the event? Okay, whatever. Um, in asking for the uh, end of the tyrannical tendencies of Appius Claudius Caecus and increasing the influence of the Senate. A move like this will put our consul in a bad light, but the upper echelons of the Roman society... So this is the Bonnie forcing their agenda. So maybe only the party in charge forces their agenda. I still don't know offhand. Um, so, uh, this will achieve their agenda, so we get lots of approval, which we don't need at the minute, but that's fine. Losing 25 popularity on that Caicus would be a bummer, but we're getting a lot of popularity from the war, so I think we're fine on that. He's not super unpopular. Losing the 5 Tyranny is great. Uh, losing the 30 PI at the minute would be fine. Um, I don't want to lose 50 approval, so I'm going to go ahead and just agree to this. We will ease up on them for now. Yeah, that's fine. That is fine. Alright, I'm going to send the boats back over here just to blockade the strait. But don't think I need to worry too much anymore. Alright, let's send these guys back over. We have a religious advance now. Our administration has expanded enough to implement one free innovation. Omen power 1% as well. All right, active drill, discipline plus 5%. Armies in the field would benefit from continued drill even up to the very eve of battle. Don't sleep on discipline bonuses. These can really stack up. Being able to get professional training soon will really help us out, especially because it's possible Epirus and or Carthage have done these texts themselves. Incidentally, Epirus is no longer at war. Um, actually, we saw that earlier, so that's not a surprise. Carthage is still at war. Carthage is really struggling this game, man. I've never seen Carthage do this badly. I mean, aside from taking the stuff that I really care about, but they're just generally not having the best campaign that I've seen. Oh, well. I shed exactly zero tears for Carthage in their poor campaign performance. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. All right, let's trade with the Sinones again, our unexpected trade partner. Who would have thought that Rome and the Sinones would be friends? Now, that's a cursed scenario indeed, if you know about the history. But that is what it is. Trade with Oreos. All right. Sounds good. Trade with um, I Guy. Alrighty, that's going to help our economy a fair bit. Uh, Fortress under siege. Yep. Now, at this stage, I'm going to keep my fleet maintenance paid for just to preserve any ships from being killed. We have plenty of money at the minute. We can afford a slight expense like that just for the sake of convenience. 
Here comes Nucaria with their Legion <laughs> helping out. Thanks, Nucaria. Really appreciate it. Oh! From the fog emerges all of the islanders. Okay, well, we've got a solution to this problem. And that is called leaving behind two light infantry to do just a skeleton crew. And then send everybody else north. Oh no, I forgot how siege, uh, fort, how fort uh, zone of control works. 31st of August, when do you get here? All right, um, this is a certified predicament. Fortunately, uh, we are still anticipated to win the fight, although this is wrong because this imminent battle modifier, this imminent battle note, or um, what's the word? Uh, notification does not take into account who's the defender and we're the attacker in hills. 30th of August, 14 days, yeah. I guess we could just hope that we get here kind of soon, but this may be a problem here. Seven Marshall versus what's the best? 11 Marshall, oh my god. We'll at least uh, come in and win with the relief force at the end, but this is a this is a problem. These guys were hiding in the fog of war. I didn't see them there. I think they were in Nure specifically, so I am caught off guard. For real, for real. That's too bad. Oh yeah, now the game. Now the game is uh, reconsidered. <laughs> we're coming as fast as we can here. If this fight's still going on, which given the morale situation it may be, I think we're going to win the fight at the end, but this is going to cost a lot of uh, our manpower. That's fine, though. We've got plenty of manpower. All right, let's see what we can do up here. All right. Fortunately, only some of these guys arrived right away, so we get one turn of protection here. So, okay, we have to just survive seven days, which is going to be what happens here. We're going to be able to pull this off, I think. In fact, I think we're going to win the fight uh, before the guys even arrive because of how bad the morale was. Now we're definitely going to win the fight, so dodged a bullet there. That could have been bad. All right, good. And then now that everyone's here, um, it's probably worthwhile. Let me finish this siege tick, then let's just do an assault to get this thing wrapped up. All right, food shortage. Yeah, let's just get this assaulted. Good Siege of Tabula is one, and now you guys, everyone, all of you, come down here. We'll just miss out on doing the sack. This is the capital, right? I kind of want to get the sack off, though. I do kind of want to get the sack off. Let me just do the assaults. Um, I, I can't, uh, I gotta get my, the, the like, the fortificate, like, there's, like, three forts right here, back to back, and it's just so hard to move around here. That being said, these guys took a lot of damage, so I think we're okay for now. Um... This army is completely safe on its own. Uh, let's see. Let me recover my morale, then do an assault here. Let me just do an assault here, then do an assault here, and then we win the war. That will be fine. That will be fine. These guys are going to do a naval invasion over here. All right, Nucaria. Go for it, king. Look at him go. <laughs> there he goes with his two martial legate. You carry a, the point of legions that you can pick your legate. Why did you pick that guy? He's, here, there he goes, <laughs> walking over the water to go. All right. Oh my God, I'm so glad I'm integrating these goobers. Holy moly! All right, everyone, just chill out here. I'm just get everyone organized as well, just for morale efficiency. All right. Here we go. Uh. You guys can pro let's wait for one tick, then we'll do an assault. Then we will do an assault. Loyal subject. Our ruler's efforts to influence Fabia Secunda are well underway. In a jovial mood, Fabia Secunda approached Consul Appia, suggesting that a formal declaration of her loyalty and commitment to the Senate would be a fine way of showing our appreciation. We remain unconvinced that this is a politically sensible move. Okay, so we can trade stability for PI. So unlike with corruption, I'm not as okay with losing stability for that. 66 PI for 10 stability probably isn't worthwhile, even that right now we have a pretty good stability trend. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, lose loyalty on her and gain 5 stability. That's a lot better. Have to use that break. Let's just go for it. This should be perfectly fine. Get this thing wrapped up. Hopefully we can uh, win this one. Yes, the sacking of Hydata is one, two sent to Capua. We'll have to deal with the slaves later. Appius Claudius Caicus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Hydata. 
the enemy fleeing disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war likely to cause those back in the Roma to admire Appius greatly, leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. This is assuredly a... oh yeah, definitely. This is a mountain tile. None shall hide. Alright, untiring devotion. Quintus Fabius Gerges is cultivating quite the reputation as a man of decency and honor. Such virtue give our citizens good reason to feel safe, secure, and stable. This is my rival, isn't it? Pretty sure. Splendid. More stability. Not going to turn my nose up at that. Alright, you guys. Um, we're going to just uh, basically brute force our way to victory here. We're going to go over and join here. And basically do one assault and then another assault and then close things out. I hope I'll have enough war score for that. I, I really do hope I'll have enough war score for that. Um, this should be the case, but I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, I have to wait to get all the stuff to see really what my options are here. But Nucaria helping out may make things better too. You imagine going to send over here to just get line of sight on their army so I can sort of see what they're up to. Don't want to be surprised again. Alright, Nabatea can reach me. They want stone. Sure. I'll trade with Nabatea. Alright, there's their army there. Okay, everyone get organized here for morale efficiency. Massive force. Let's just let our morale build back up to full so we're not throwing away lives for no good reason. That would not be very Roman of us. Alright, so we will be able to return to peace in this alleged peacetime consulship period pretty soon. <laughs> We're nearly there. Oh my god, pirates, don't, don't, don't do it. My fleet is fully paid for and it's very, well, it's relatively strong. It's stronger than you, so keep away. <laughs> don't, don't run into me and, and damage my ships for no good reason. Okay, that's right, you better run. Go north, that's right. <laughs> the legion took attrition. Um, goofy behavior. We can probably do an assault here as well, to be honest. We have a breach, actually, so let's definitely do an assault up here after I take control. Didn't notice the breach earlier. That's fine. Alright, here we go. Portus Veneris. So, of course, it's being led by my governor, so I didn't get to do the sack. That's fine. And then that is everything for Arturia, so we can just head back down to Pisa to recover. And, uh, yeah, that should be fine. Alright, maybe on this monthly tick we can go for it, perhaps. Uh, I'm a bit worried, at not, a bit, not being at full morale. We have a breach, actually, so let's go for it. I didn't notice this breach either, so let's just go for it. That's fine. Notice, uh, we still lose some numbers, but the morale losses are way less severe. Okay, now we go for Garulus and get this thing wrapped up. This one we'll wait for full morale, then we'll do an assault, and we should be able to outpace the morale recovery and the manpower recovery of this uh, coalition army. Alright, now we just wait. This thing's nearly done. These guys are going in to kill. Oh, here's uh, in Gaunia's army. Pirate fleets on the, the Potus? Really? Okay. Interesting. Choices are being made by the AI, and I am perplexed. For the first time ever. <laughs> Famously, I think this game's AI has no problems, and I've never mentioned that before. <laughs> Alright, um, Islander fleet sailing around. Alright, this is probably enough. Famous last words. Order the assault on the full garrison, no breach fort. Just power through this, get it over with. Once we do, we're going to be able to claim everything um, with the war score we have, so this should be fine. Alright, Siege of Gorillas is 130-day siege. Okay. We got basically maxed out war score, so I want this, I want this, and you'll never guess it. I want this, 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 and that. Okay. So remember when I said this would be a small-scale war? Well, that ended up not being how that worked out here. 26 AE. This does involve, to be fair, uh, how... Halving? Having... Reducing by half Etruria's remaining land and taking their capital. And also, Tag deleting three nations, so that is a uh, sizable territorial gain. But this will completely secure Italia Force, aside from uh, Sabinia and our other feudatories. So, I think this is what we go for. Nothing to, no need to get too complicated here. I don't need anything in Sisipine Gaul, and I'm happy to go with just this. 
All right, 26 AE. That's pretty bad, but uh, we are working on that. This will good thing I have my stability boosted up so much because I've I without knowing it I was pre-planning for this massive victory. So this has just sped up our Italia conquest quite a bit. All right, here we go. They actually almost don't go for this even with 99 war score. So this is really quite a large deal. Increase my rig to major power. You're goddamn right it does. <laughs> Let's go for it. All right, and now we've got all the pop-ups. All right, the Italic local power of Etruria accepts our generous peace offer, Etruscan uh, Ariminum to Rome. This is where everything started from. This, these two tiles came back to haunt Etruria in a big way here. Etruscan Corsica to Rome, uh, Rubrensian Sardinia Australis to Rome, uh, Kel Satanian Sardinia Australis to Rome, Lugui Denensian Sardinia Borealis to Rome, Keltensian Sardinia Borealis to Rome, and Rubrensian Sardinia Borealis to Rome. Now, um, I could, let me look at the power thing later, I could make some money, but I really should lower my AE. Uh, 1.5 AE reduction is probably needed here, and I don't need any more money to be honest. I really don't. Um, this would uh, not be worth it, I don't think, for the tyranny. So, banish those a class, put the rest of the sword for all three of the Sardinian peoples. Okay, my consul, Appius Claudius Gaicus. We have increased in rank and are now a major power country instead of a regional power since we have at least 100 territories. We can now guarantee other countries and threaten war and support rebels. I think uh, threaten war and support rebels are the new things we can do. Maybe it's just support rebels. I actually don't remember. Um, this means we also now have one additional mercenary army slot and reduced found city cost modifier which is great and also i don't remember if this is another dip slot or if we had two already but whatever the case we've got what you see on the screen here plus a bit more all right okay so first things first uh, 35 cohorts now that's pretty good lower all the armies we also now have a military tradition available i think this is the first one in this campaign so we have the Roman and Italic tribe traditions. The Roman traditions in particular are quite good. Um, I think we should go probably straight for Roman roads. Uh, that being said, I think we get access to normal roads from our civic advances, right? I'm pretty sure. Um, either way, hmm, that size multiplier. That's a pretty rare modifier to get. Definitely worth going for that. Let me get scale the walls. This is good either way. And if I need the Roman roads tradition to build roads as Rome, which could be the case, I, I just don't remember, honestly. Um, I want to get there soon. All right, so siege ability plus 10%. Siege engines were scarcely used in the early Republic. Siege is instead relying on covert attempts to scale the walls as well as sieges of attrition. During the siege of Wei, around 396 BC, uh, Roman engineers reputedly proved their worth by boring a great tunnel under the walls of the Etruscan city, breaking the siege once and for all. Alrighty. Looks good to me. We have new import routes available because of our... Oh, this was also probably from being a, a great power. Okay, so let's, what do we trade in now? Um, we can probably reach more people. We can definitely reach more people because we have more dip range. So we have a lot more access to things. Probably worth going for elephants. Um, elephants are a very strong resource because they give a flat pop output bonus. But for now, we may not want to go that far. Though elephants are worth a lot too. Let me trade for elephants for now and then kind of come back to this later. Um, for now though, send our navy back over to Ostia. We're going to keep getting our navy set up here. Don't do anything funny here, my dude. And now let's let one day go by. Okay. So... Uh, we have negative stability trend thanks to our AE being even at 59 uh, stability now, so that's not great, but that's fine. As for our new territory, um, the capital was moved back to Ariminium, which is phenomenal. That's the, the rare time that the automatic capital moving, at least I think it was moved by itself, happened accurately, so let's destroy this fort here. Um, I could build a fort here. I probably should build a fort here in the mountains. Let me do. Let me trade for stone really quick before I do anything too goofy. Um, as if trading for stone prevents me from doing goofy things, which we all know is not how that works. Goofiness flows forth from my actions like water from the waterfall. 
Why was that so poetic? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'd be very poetic talking about being goofy. Pay for the fort. Or not pay for the fort. Oh, yes, pay for the fort. But buy the fort. Main reason. All right, over here. Um, actually, first... Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, and this is on simulation, good. Okay, over here in Corsica, this place here has uh, the local religion as Naragi. We wanna focus on uh, converting first before assimilating. Generally, uh, without any other modifiers, conversions happen faster, so we will let this convert first, then we'll assimilate. Conversion will just make everyone a lot happier. Um, in terms of the territory we just got here, we have a farming settlement in the mountains for, uh, for grain, I suppose that's fine. Um, mountains do do uh, provide a bit extra food, oddly enough, so this is probably okay. We'll set up a, some slaves over there in a bit. A farm. Uh, oh, hold on, no. Yeah, yeah, okay, so with Elaria, which is now its Latin name, uh, the previous one was the Etruscan name, uh, what do we have here? We have three libraries, which is uh, interesting. The extra conversion speed isn't too bad, though. Although everyone living here is already Hellenic mostly everyone living here. So the conversion speed in this tile isn't honestly super helpful. So um, that being said, I don't need to necessarily get rid of this infrastructure because we do need to convert people around here. It's just all the people we need to convert aren't living in Ill Illyria. Hmm. Well, other than that, what else do we have here? We have a port and we have a noble district or the noble district can definitely go. This is not going to be a research center by any means, most likely. Um, what do I want to do here? Ah. Uh, hmm. Well, one thing I definitely probably want to consider is possibly setting up my first colony in the culture map mode. Specifically to get some Romans onto this island, because otherwise I'm going to have a lot of trouble colonizing this land without Romans. It says Pisse. That wouldn't be a terrible spot, but I'm, I'm not going to do it if it's uh, not worthwhile for that. Um, let's see. Let me come back to this later. Okay, and then down here, it's a lot more convoluted. Um, so most of Sardinia, Australis, is held by Carthage, so we'll come back to that later. Uh, where's the capital at? It's in uh, Hydata Hi Hipsatana. Well, this is a mountain tile. That's probably okay for now. Eventually, uh, Kerali, or whatever the Latin name for this will end up being, is the better spot for the capital, but let's look at the size of the city. Sulki is huge. 50 population? Oh my god. Right. Um, incidentally, um, befri let me wait and befriend this guy on a different character that is going to be around for longer, because I don't want to necessarily pull the trigger on getting that territory before I'm completely ready, but let's keep an eye on this situation to be sure. Okay, so over here, um, in terms of where the capital should be, having it be in the fort in the mountains is, I think, fine for now. Travel settlement can go. Travel settlement can go. And then this fort over here probably isn't terrible to keep, but I think I will get rid of it. Don't think I need that. Right up here in Sardinia Borealis, we completely control this area. Let's destroy the port. What else do we have around here? mine for base metals. We'll make use of that. This fort here does not need to be here. This fort can go as well. Um, tribal settlement in the mountains. This port here can go. This port and maybe the city can go. Um, come back to that. This fort here can go as well. Right. So, uh, technically speaking, these farmland tiles are probably the best for cities over here. I mean, there is an argument for having the capital be in the hills in the center at Luguidonis, which does uh, touch most of the tiles in this actually quite densely packed uh, province. But all things considered, I think if we were to put it at, let's see, one, two, three, four, versus one, two, three. Uh, I don't know which side of the tiles um, this farmland is touching. But we could move the capital here and set this up to be our city in the area. Uh, if we do it at Nure, it for sure will be on this side. I just don't know offhand where the, the, the port for this is, and I'm assuming it's going to be touching Mare Sardona, but not, or not this one, I should say, not this one. I want to have a port on this tile. I think Nure is my best bet for that, to be honest, all things considered. I guess we do have another place we can build a city at Tarshish. That's farmland. 
That being said, there's let, yeah, let, let me put it up at Turris uh, Libisonis because there's no other good city tile that touches this tile. I want to have a port on this tile. So let's have this become the capital, which we can do now because uh, there's no more territory we don't own. We'll get for this. This won't help with the... Actually, loyalty here is not that bad. Again, it's mostly tribesmen here, so maybe that's why. It's a lot easier to conquer tribes because they don't have many citizens or nobles, and citizens and nobles are the ones that are really unhappy at being conquered. All right, so move that there. Um, I will go ahead and dismantle this city, I think. Definitely. All right. Um, library can go, and the port can go, and the city can go. Okay. And then now, let's do some stone trading. Oh, we are, we're trading for stone already, that's right. Let's build a fort here. This is fine. Um, we're just going to keep this mountain fort for now in case things with Carthage go south. Having that is strategically quite good. Um, and then aside from that, I think we're good on the islands for buildings. On the mainland, any more buildings I want to shift around here. I'm still waiting to move this until I get Alea. So it's just a matter of uh, that happening. Um, incidentally, having uh, Cali, uh, Calipolis end up end up being my city down here isn't a terrible idea. We could also still keep Barium as a city. It's the right distance from Canusium. We could have multiple cities down here. This is a pretty lush area. We could definitely support multiple cities. Uh, Calipolis does give us, um, I think, a port on this tile, which is quite nice. Definitely worth considering. Come back to that later, though. I think what I do is I build... Let me do Slave Micro first. I have a lot of slaves to attend to. Alright, switch off stone. Trade for vegetables. Just whatever this was. Um... Uh, whatever, a guy told you or something. Okay, so here's my plan. I'm gonna do something a little bit weird. I'm going to actually fill Illyria to the brim with all the slaves that can get into it so that we can take advantage of its massive pop conversion speed. This is like the highest pop conversion speed tile in the universe right now with the religious conversion and then all the bonuses from the libraries. Before I destroy these, I may as well take full advantage of them. So let me go ahead and just move all of the slaves in the area in here. Everyone that is uh, not Hellenic. So let's just uh, fill the city with uh, wrong religion slaves. I know this looks pretty weird, but um, actually here though, uh, I could send some slaves over just to get the green, but I, I want to convert everybody. And this is the way. This is a weird move, but I'm, I'm going to do it like this. Okay, um, so now, <laughs> uh, Illyria is the city of slaves, but it will have a lot of population to convert, and hopefully convert quite quickly. And um, the other thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to also, uh, well, I could I could allow slave promotion and then just use whatever slaves are left that are converted and send them back out. I don't think I need this many slaves in this area, ultimately. So let me, let me allow slave promotion to continue happening. This place here, one thing it's going to do, though, in the meantime, is it's going to try to fit these slaves into its pop classes. So we're going to get a lot of freemen over here, but hopefully that'll these guys will become Roman freemen, so let's hope that that works out. Over here, we basically have no infrastructure anywhere to do any conversion, but we do have conversion policy going, so that's going to have to do. I think we're good now with the slave stuff over here. I guess we could move slaves around over here as well. Let's see. Um, if I were to build... No, not, not you. If I were to build mines... We actually already have mines. Right, we have a mine for base metals. And where else? A mine. We could build a mine here or here. What do we have? Base metals and stone. Alright, well, I have a lot of slaves in this area, I think. Let me check that really quick. Uh, I think I have enough to support two mines. So let me move slaves into Macopsisa in order to get some more output down here, and more uh, commerce. So let's move Pops in. From coordinates will be fine. From the mountains here is definitely fine. We don't have enough room there. What do we have now? Seven. 
I'm going to need five more uh, from Fadam Carisi, that is fine, and from Carbia, and from Nure. There we go. And then, let's see here. If I were to set up a, let's see, which one's more valuable, stone or base metals? Stone is 0.25, base metals is 0.25, so they're both the same. Um, I probably want to set up a, a, a stone mine, or let me set up a base metals mine in, where, where is it? In Alessa, those mountains as well, so that's probably good. We have three here already, versus two. I'm going to need um, nine slaves. Do I have enough slaves left in this area? Maybe I do. It is a unclear. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So no, I don't. So I don't have enough to move them over. And some of them would be coming from this other mine I just set up. So, okay, we don't have enough to set up a second mine. Good thing I checked. No, that's the wrong one. All right, so switch off of vegetables now. Actually, let's do some more slave micro in my core, because I now just got a bunch more slaves. Um, I'm going to keep redistributing slaves around my cities here. So from Roma, actually, let me check and see. We're actually below optimal ratio, so let me not move slaves on Roma. I think that's fine. We'll just leave it alone. We do have, probably in our ports, a couple slaves here and there. I think everything's good, though, with assimilation. I think we're fine, actually, with where all the slaves are. I don't need to move any more slaves to set up more infrastructure quite yet. Let me just save my money, cancel my vegetables, and perhaps reconsider... I don't know if I need honey anymore. I don't think I... I guess I was getting the honey for the food, and we do still have food problems. We're consuming 1.1k um, food every year, which is an enormous amount. That's actually over our food capacity, which is really not ideal. I think we need to reorganize our trades a bit to really prioritize food, because our growth in Latium is a little out of control, which uh, <laughs> have not been helping that with my actions. Okay, let me do this, actually. Let me trade for stone and do some infrastructure work here. I want to get... Um, the rest of this province organized here. So let's build a barracks down here. So we're going 100% into research and manpower for what will be five citizen noble cities, and then the rest of these tiles will either be resource tiles, like with here, or they're gonna be uh, farm tiles to support this province, or barracks tiles. We could have had a logging camp here, um, which isn't a terrible idea, that's more manpower, but I think we're gonna get more manpower in total from having the barracks here and having it be a good barracks tile. Now what we can do is build a barracks up here in the hills with the horses. I think this would be fine as well. Let's build a barracks up here just to get more manpower out of this tile as well. Really maximizing our manpower from this entire province. And then a bit more infrastructure could be done in my cities. I could get a lot of manpower. 15 manpower by building another conscription camp. And I can build infinite number of conscription camps. It's just within the money that I have. What else would I want to build first? Well, I probably want to build two more noble districts. So let's get these, because these have limits. Let's get the noble districts done first, um, just so our noble uh, ratio is increased, which will be handy. We already have 12 nobles, but we can get more. Um, and then um, getting this academies improve output, but not happiness. Any noble happiness, that would be good. We could also get some forms for more freemen. Oh, I don't want freemen here. Um, Courts of Law, though, I do want these for citizen happiness and citizen ratio. Let me get all my ratio buildings set up here. Now we're out of money. Okay, that's fine. I think just focusing on the Roma right now is still the way to go. We've nearly got it. So there's obviously more infrastructure we can do once we get our ratio buildings, but getting the ratio buildings sort of creates the skeleton of the, um, the way the city will work with its population type. So I want to get that set up there. Now, let me go ahead and do... I'm actually just going to completely start over with all my trades and set... We have enough trade roost with everyone, we can do this safely. I'm just going to completely set it up from scratch and just make sure that I've got all the stuff that I need and nothing that I don't need. Because now we don't need to really trade for value quite as much, although some of these resources may be good for their own sake. So, let's just cancel everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? No longer importing probably doesn't need to have its own pop-up window or pause on pop-up. So I don't think we need to worry about having these pop-ups, honestly, because we know that we're no longer importing. Okay, so first things first, we need... Well, okay, what do we have locally? 
we've got a ton of grain, all of which we're keeping, so that's a good start. Um, we have the wood, which we need to have one copy of locally f to produce those uh, those ships, so that's perfectly fine. Um, there is an argument for instead of building a barracks, building a uh, a lumber camp in the tile that is wood, just because wood is a resource I would like to have another copy of in order. Although actually, having local horses surplus is also not a bad thing. We could just get a copy of wood from having enough slaves in the barracks tile, though. So it's, I think it's fine. Surplus is just spearman offense, and then the horses, it's just heavy cav discipline, which I don't think is going to matter for us right now. We have iron surplus locally. Um, we have cloth surplus locally. We have wine surplus locally. And of course, we super duper have grain surplus locally. All right, so first things first, uh, things that I absolutely do need is livestock. Livestock's one of the most important resources just to have in the background. Um, fish is very tempting for the Freeman happiness across the board, but I think given that most of our unrest is going to come from nobles and citizens, I think we got to go back over and get a uh, gold. Actually, we can't get glass again. That is a shame. Actually, maybe they have two in Galilee. That's possible. I do want the country sid level. So shoot. Okay, I've missed. I've screwed this up. I'm, I'm going to miss out on the sid level. Uh, God damn it. Egypt, why don't you have more glass for me? <laughs> Alright, fine. We'll trade for precious metals. Yeah, that's annoying. Um, let's see what else. Um, precious metals for the citizen happiness. That's good. It's probably worth it to get fish for the Freeman happiness across the board. That's the whole nation right there. And the extra food doesn't hurt. So let's trade with Egypt. Egypt, if you do any funny business with me, my entire trade system will fall apart. So please don't do any funny business. All right. Um, could get olives for national slave happiness. That's not a bad idea. Definitely could help out across the board. But there's other stuff we may want first. Uh, let's see here. I can almost reach some ebony. Ebony is quite rare. We'll come back to that later. Um, hemp for local for happiness probably isn't necessary as much. Really stuff that gives national happiness bonuses. So at this stage, we've got national citizen happiness. We've got the national freeman happiness. National noble happiness, I think. What's that? What's the one that gives national noble happiness? It's dyes. We, don't, we do not have dyes. Actually, if I canceled some of my exports, I could internally trade for dyes. And to be fully honest, getting National Noble Happiness 8% across the board would help out a lot with our recent conquests. So, not a bad idea. Wouldn't help with our commerce economy because we're doing internal trading, but that would be perhaps fine. Let me see if I can do that really quick. I think it's worth looking to see. Exports, very good. Am I selling two dyes? I am not selling two dyes. <sighs> All right, where do I have dyes being produced? It's somewhere around here, right? I thought I saw that I had a dyes production tile somewhere. All right, whatever. I'm not going to be able to find it. Not uh, efficiently. So let's go back to this. I think going for dates for the commerce income and the food is also worthwhile. So Egypt again. Not that this uh, is going to increase our food by a ton, but it's what we got to do here. Um... And then at this point, um, fruit would also be more commerce income and more food, although it's just commerce income in Latium, which is still good. Loyalty of characters, is that a concern at the minute? No, I don't have any disloyalty, so I think we're fine. And that's with really high tearing, so I think we're going to be okay, all things considered. Um, earthenware for Freeman output is always very tempting. This is going to boost our manpower a ton, but we have limited slots here. I think I need to get all the national bonuses I can get. I mean, the 8% national is so powerful. Let's trade with uh, Garmantia and Boletia for some olives. Gotta do it. It's not very exciting, but these national bonuses really add up across the board. Woad even potentially could be worth getting, although I don't have a lot of tribesmen. Although I just got a lot of tribesmen, so... That being said, these tribesmen aren't, like, too angry. Okay, well, maybe, maybe I speak too soon. Yeah, 
Yeah, I should I should maintain the national happiness bonuses at this stage as a great power. Probably is going to be necessary. Not very exciting, but we gotta go for it. So let's then trade for the glass with our last slot and wait and see if another trade pops up. All right. Maximizing national happiness across the board is the safest way to approach this, all things considered. And then let's go ahead and not forget to do this, uh, decrease our pay to, um, to that. Lower fleet maintenance. Oh, hold on, wait. I regret doing that. Let's move around like this so that we don't get killed by the pirates. This has happened to me before in a previous campaign. I'm not letting that happen to me again. Holy, 31 pirates over here? Jeez. All right, this fleet needs to get back to port and, and hide <laughs> before a disaster ensues or lower fort maintenance. Okay, without any other changes, we're already looking at a pretty good economic boost there. That's quite nice. I think we're good to go ahead and resume. All right. Swing around. Oh my gosh. These stupid pirates. All right. Um, we may have to do some evasive maneuvers here to get this fleet back to port safely. Okay, you are going here. So let's head here. You need to not go south once you arrive. Okay, they, they're going over here, I think. So I think we're fine. Alright, dodge the pirates. You just wait here for a sec. Wait for these guys to leave. These guys are just staying put. 28th of January. Alright. Sneak through here to get to Ostia. Just don't, don't get caught up, please. On low morale, this navy is going to get shredded by pirates if it touches one of these pirate fleets. Civic advances three. Also, pirates are planning on my land. Not nothing to be done about that at the minute. Pop capacity and global monthly food modifier, and very nicely uh, professional training. We can now get the law for raising a legion in the capital region if we would like. Also, discipline five percent and experience decay minus 0.50. By relying only on the most skilled tutors, we cut down on the time it takes to produce adequately informed fighting men. Very good. <sighs> okay. Um, and as for that law, that is the... Um... Oh yeah, the Punic Reform Law. So, um, this one here is a big gamble because we basically shred our own levy size multiplier. However, we can still use a lot of manpower for the Legion if we go for this, and we get more national manpower to compensate. This is an interesting idea, because we can customize our Legion to have the right composition for whatever opponent they're fighting. In particular, having a Legion that we designed specifically to counter the Carthaginian, like, Punic naval co uh, army composition isn't a terrible idea. However, I don't think we need to worry about that. We have a really strong Legion at the minute, or a really strong Levy at the minute, I should say. Don't really want to mess that up uh, before I feel completely ready. And at the minute, uh, raising our levy in Italia, raising our, sorry, raising our legion in Italia remains uh, perfectly, no, raising our levy, oh my god, I'm so, I'm so tired. Raising our levy in Italia remains perfectly fine. Most of our wars are happening in this region, so this is, this is just fine. All right, everyone come down and uh, get organized together. Then we'll be able to start actually getting our fleets uh, set up here soon. Oh, I didn't actually have to go into Austin, did I? Whoops. Alright. Okay, so now we've got ourselves, let me just go ahead and just name this the Reserves. And we're going to organize this. So, um, we can actually quite conveniently already split this into three even groups with the 30 Liburnians, and then we can just add the hex rays to each group. So, that is quite nice. Now i got to do this, uh, why is this organized like this? Oh my god, alright. Three hex arrays, um, and then I'll just do it in this way. So classes one, finished. I'm gonna have classes one uh, stay in uh, Ostia, and then I'm gonna have reserves split away another three to be classes two. Classes two, I'm probably going to station uh, station up at Pise for now. Um, not sure if that's going to be their permanent home. And then, classes three. Let me just move the rest of them. Let classes three come down and get stationed at Heraclea. Alright. Now, if we don't get killed by pirates, this should be a safe move. 
what I can do now at least is actually send, um, oh my gosh, I cannot select the reserves. I can send uh, 30, thir or I mean, uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, and 10 to the three fleets. All right, so you head on up to join the second classes. You split in half, and then you come down here. There we go. All right. <laughs> it's complicated, but I think we're going to be able to... All right, pirates are up to no good. You stop there and maybe go into Kosei. And then the other guy going there as well needs to also go into Kosei. I do not want to be killed by pirates. We're going to wait for these guys to pass through. Actually, they're not going along the coastline, so you guys should both be able to make it up to uh, Pisei after all. All right. No shenanigans, please. Up to speed three as well. Uh, oh, those are mer they they stopped being in piracy. They went back to just being mercs. That's fine. Okay, looking good. Fortresses are finishing as well. Very good. Now our uh, northern borders are nearly fully fortified. The fort at Clusium may be a little overkill, but I want to have a fort on the interior, um, and this area here is vulnerable to invasion from the north. And it's a city, so I want to have cities be fortified when feasible, so that's fine. Um, did I stop trading for stone? I did, good. Alright, rare min-max W for <laughs> misadventure. Love to see that. Um, you organize, we need to use the names, which is funny, but that's fine. Alright, let's uh, wait for these guys to arrive, and then we'll get this... Uh, truly organized. So now it's just going to be sending individual hexer rays to join up with our fleet fleet. Uh, our three fleets. Our, our flea fleets. <laughs> the flea fleets. Yeah, they're getting organized into the flea fleets. Alright. Okay, so first things first. Classes 1. Designation. That's not the right thing. Designation. Ostia. Okay, so uh, I will potentially reserve the right to... Actually, what I might do... Let me, let me have them be designated according to, um, I think distance from Rome is a fun thematic like thing here. I like to name my fleets because I love you know the roleplay stuff, but having the fleets that are closer to Rome have lower numbers I think is kind of fun, even if it's sort of like, you know, maybe slightly closer or farther, but um, classes two up here is going to be the, uh, the Pisae fleet, Pisae, Pisae, or Pisae. So we have our Ostia fleet and our Pisae fleet. And then over here, we're going to rename you from the reserves. This is the guy, this is the one that has the uh, the co-consul admiral still, so we'll come to that in just a sec. Uh, classes three. For now, you're going to be designated uh, Era Clea. All right. And then uh, I don't think any of these need admirals right now. I'm going to fire this guy. Um, I'm going to leave them unadmiraled. Is that a, a verb? Admiraled? Um, until we're getting ready for war. Then we'll just assign admirals from the uh, from the characters available. As ultimately, admirals are sitting around costing us wages and threatening us with their loyalty to then take these fleets under their command and go rogue. So I'd rather just leave them without an active admiral while we're at peacetime. I think that's perfectly fine. All right. So very good. We've got the foundations of a strong navy in the works. Carthage is building up their ships. Epirus is losing their ships, so we actually have, at this point, a same size navy to Epirus, and it's probably heavier than Epirus's navy, at least to some extent, so that is good to see. Though we have a long ways to go before we get the, uh, the rest of our ships finished. Looks like Carthage is bouncing back over here in this war. This war is uh, not going so well, but they are holding on for dear life just a little bit. I guess we'll see what happens with that. 26.2k manpower max now, very good. And I think at this point, we need to actually improve our relations with Brutia to get them, um, to get them uh, integrated. So let me go ahead, actually we're already doing improve, so we'll just wait, In integration reduces your improve, so we have, to, we have to just wait on that. That's fine. Military is powering up. Administratively, how are things looking? Actually, pretty okay across the board, surprisingly. Could be worse. If you guys want my leather, we'll trade with Insubria, sure. This is manageable. The Corsica is especially oddly fine. 
down here, this stuff is under control, so we'll just wait. And then, um, is this governor still the guy? 54, so it's increasing a little bit, so... So bring it to 30... 34. I think if he's friends with another ruler, he has reduced loyalty. But again, I'm gonna wait until we're, um, under... Maybe under... Oh, hold on, um... The former chief of Marzia is the new assumed consul. That is interesting. He is a popularis. This doesn't change things too much. He's a bit worse than the previous guy because he doesn't have uh, anywhere near the same finesse, but martial-wise, he's pretty good at 9. Uh, not exactly the alternative I was hoping for. I didn't expect he would actually be um, considered a good electoral candidate. Do I want popularis to take over? Freeman Happiness would certainly be... A solid situation. I mean, this guy is an interesting character. He's got the rags to riches story from the chief of Marzia to the the consul of Rome in 465. This might be fine. What are his traits? Ooh, I don't like submissive on the consul. Co province commerce and national commerce. That's pretty punishing. Obsessive perfectionist. Wow. Incapable. This guy's terrible. All right, I think we've discovered our first uh, consul elect who we don't want to be the consul. I'm going to interfere in this situation here and see what I can do to screw this up. Um, so first things first, why does this guy have so much support? Let's try to figure this out. He's got um, Optimates, Bonnie, and Populari support. 18.94. What's that coming from? I don't have any idea what's that, what that's coming from. Um, I could rival him and then assassinate him, but that's a lot of tyranny and uh, AE. And I have to actually attempt it, and there's no guarantee that I'll win the attempt. And I can't do scheme influence during uh, that attempt. <sighs> if he was in prison... Actually, can I imprison a rival? No, not the primary heir. He is the primary heir. What are you talking about? I guess in a Republican way. <sighs> All right. Um, I may have made a miscalculation. I wanted this guy to be like a like an admiral. This guy would be a great admiral, but as a governor, as the, the consul, this guy is completely miscast. Um, I could smear him, which would damage his popularity a lot. He does have a lot of popularity because he was formerly a leader. I think I'm going to actually just go for this. Um, we're going to be fine on the support here. Smearing is cheap. Uh, only 1.50 tyranny. Let's see if this um, changes things up here. Maybe give it a monthly tick. I would really prefer that guy to not be my consul because his, his detriment to my economy is a bit too severe. He's okay for martial purposes, but really would prefer that that not be how that works out. Okay. So now we've got just the sort of switcheroo version of the first, like prediction of who would win. So we've got uh, Gaius Valerius Babulcus, who I didn't note earlier was better than the original presumed consul Quintus Fabius Rulianus, and they just switched who's where. This works for me. This is actually... Did I just accidentally do the most incredible micro of my Republic I've ever done? <laughs> this guy's really old, and uh, what's his health like? He's healthy. Okay, he's a, he's a hale and a hearty 63-year-old. He's gonna be 65 when the election happens, I think. But it should be noted, he is also a popularis, and he's got very, 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 very high popularis conviction. This is the most diehard popularis in the history of the universe. So this guy is a thousand percent going to be... Oh, I'm also, um, really honest, is also popularis. Were they popularis both before? I think these guys both switched over, at least he did. I don't remember him being a pop... Or he may have been a popularis before, but this guy, I think, was a... Um, I actually don't remember what he was. Whatever. The point is that now we've got Popularis coming in here. So that's fine. I don't mind the Popularis being in charge. I just didn't want that one character to be in charge. So this works for me. I'm happy to have uh, Gaius Valerius Babulcus take over. The 12 Marshal is definitely what we want to have for our Epirus War, which will be the defining feature of the next five-year period. So we proceed. In the meantime, um, I could use some of my money to do more Slave Micro or more investment. I don't think that is super necessary at the minute. Look at this massive slave city. This is crazy. What's the religious conversion? Like 1.63 or 65 rather. That's not super fast, but it's about as good as I think we're going to realistically get without a lot more investment. So 
I may be, um, I may have uh, gone a little overboard with this plan. Uh, maybe I'm, uh, yeah, this may not be quite how this will work. But we at least will promote many of these slaves quite quickly. So we at least will get rid of some of the extra slaves we don't really need around here. So it does work in that regard. Slave promotion is much better in a city than it will be in a tile. Or in a uh, settlement, I should say. Because my salt works for me. We can just finish building the first fleet, and then we'll have uh, other hex rays above 20 go out to also 265. Let's see how much we take what we get. Um, we'll have the others go out to the other fleets once we have over 20. So 265, let's see what we get after the monthly tick. Should increase a little bit, at least. Uh, okay, that's not what I was expecting to see, but okay, it will increase eventually. Uh, we'll just hope that that's a weird blip on the radar. Um, I could invest more into things like barracks if I would like. Now, um, I don't feel quite ready to start investing into other territories as much as Latium. Uh, Latium just has so many good bonuses, I want to really capitalize on those. So... Um, also, food-wise, things are looking good. You know what I should be doing? I should start building some granaries in these cities. I think that needs to be a priority at this point. How much were granaries again? If I were to build one in Roma, for example. I, I could build them in the other cities first, because Roma has limited space, and the other cities have plenty of space for more buildings. Um, granary is 43. You know what? Okay, let me trade for stone. Cancel the sheep for just a quick sec. Bring in the stone. All right. Let's build some granaries. That, uh, we can, I think, build two and maybe three granaries. Let's build a granary in Ostia. And one in Wei'i. And then we actually can build one more. Let's build one in Tiber. Then we'll build one in Lewinium and then one in Roma at the end. Actually, how many can... We can actually build infinite granaries, I think. There's no limit, I don't think. So I'm fairly sure. Okay, well, I want to. I guess I don't need them to be in the Roma specifically. Let's build them in the other cities because granaries have their most important modifier is the provincial food capacity, which is province based and not tile based. So the granary in Rome would provide civ level, but other buildings give that too. And the food modifier in Rome isn't really a big deal. So in uh, Roma, the tile, I mean. So I think granaries in the other cities is a better use of my city slots, all things considered, oddly enough. Um, all right, let's uh, switch back to sheep from stone. Ah, look at that. No pop-ups. Or right, we have 100 livestock reachable now. That's a nice milestone. Great with the Egyptians. Okay. We proceed. Very good. Elia wants my base metals. No. Not trading with Elia. Trade with somebody else. <sighs> we proceed. What's going on in the world? Um, Carthage is uh, no longer at war. Okay. I think this ended in sort of a white peace situation. I don't see any big changes in their territory. This is potentially bad, because they may now consider me a good target. Um, although, they're, actually, okay, they do have a claim on me. Wish I was told about that game. Well, that's probably fine. We do actually have some chance at competing in the oceans now. Not a great chance, but we at least have a navy. Although it's split into three sections, but we can merge them together in an emergency under one good admiral and maybe, you know, strike out and try our best. We can also make use of pirate fleets to supplant our numbers. Or I should say supplement our numbers, not supplant our numbers. And we can make use of mercenary armies. We are both major powers now, by the way, so that should be noted. As for Epirus, uh, these guys, um, they've actually gained more territory now, so... Ultimately, they would have lost their defensive league anyways, but I wanted to see if that strategy worked, which it did. So let's just hope that Carthage kind of, like, holds off for now. Um, what they should probably do is focus on their own core territory of Africa. Maybe go for Massilia... Go for actually these guys are refutatory. They have a claim on Massilia. They don't. They may go for Gadir. We'll see what they do. I don't think they shouldn't feel like I'm a good target right now. So I think we're gonna be okay. Punic War will happen, but on my terms and on my timeline. Insubri is doing well. Dalmatia is doing well. Um, Ptolemaics are. Generally winning the successor war, Selly kids are taking a big beating. Mario's doing fine. Phnom's doing great. Chin's doing great. 
Strong news to agree. All the standard winners. The roving uh, Maynods. Uh, there have been sightings of what some call Maynods and Curries. Others say they're nothing more than bandits and madmen. Uh, where is this? Oh, right. Um, we should be careful about attacking these men and women, as we could make ourselves unpopular among the god and other followers. His other followers. However, leaving them to continue their ravaging throughout our countryside will be will not be popular among our people. 5k manpower for this. Or... 70 gold, which would put us into bankruptcy for a second. Blessings of wine for 10 years. Omen power and divine sacrifice cost, but Curace gets reduced happiness. I don't care at all about Curace's happiness. This is a, a slave mine. Or lose stability. I'm paying the gold. Screw it. Um, I don't want to go into bankruptcy this. So I'm going to cancel one of these uh, granaries. I'm going to cancel two of these granaries. Damn, all right. I'm not paying 5k manpower out of your mind. Alright, I want the omen power and divine sacrifice cost reductions as well. A shrine to Bacchus will ease these sufferings. Okay, and then we'll just buy more granaries once we have more money, which will be soon. Back at number one. Suck at Crete. <laughs> We're doing pretty well. Alright, that's been a pretty fun campaign so far. Like I've said before, I don't really play as Rome that often, so it's always really fun to just kind of like it's it's in some ways more relaxing, even though that is this is still a technically complicated campaign. The Cushion Civil War ends. I guess we had to know about this. The bitter civil war in Cush has finally come to an end with the loyal forces of Actasanus the First Marid utterly crushing the rebel armies led by Cash Marod and his scheming cohorts. We are reliably informed that the turning point of the war was during the siege of Nero when the rebel forces attempted to rout the Loyalist army, but were outmaneuvered by the superb tactics tactics of Actasanius I Meroid. The outcome of this war is largely irrelevant to us, as we do not consider Kush as either a friend or an enemy. Nevertheless, we have to be careful now that their nation is on track. I am not concerned about Kush uh, whatsoever. These guys are behind Egypt uh, geographically for me, so they are not, to, uh, not in a position to really bother me at all, so that should be fine. All right, we proceed. Fleet maintenance is climbing quickly as these um, hex arrays are expensive, but that should be fine, ultimately. Now we can trade for stone once again and build another granary. Let's do just that. Get it under construction. Uh, no, trade for stone, please. All right, let's rebuild the granary that we were building in Wei. Good. Switch back to sheep. I also don't think these need to be pop-ups either, to be honest. So let me just uh, close that. All right. Should have done that a long time ago, but got to it eventually. All right. Policy-wise, I think things are looking solid. We could spend our PI and some money on some of this stuff. I probably want to do more investments, honestly, in Latium. It's probably worth considering. Um, there's also some other stuff we could do over here. We could increase the manpower and whatnot. No, not with Septim, somebody else. Uh, Sparta, once my base metals. All right, sure, I'll turn to Sparta. I want more investments. I think they need to be a priority. I could also do this in other places, though, without the gold cost, but let's just wait and see. Let us just wait and see. Okay. Sabinia, I think... No. Next year. What about you guys? You're not happy enough to do it, but you would do it now if you were happy enough. Could give them a gift, but I need to wait anyways. It is trending up. I don't think there's any huge rush. We'll integrate Brutia whenever we get to it. There is no need to rush that. Oops. Alrighty. Uh, Amphisa, what's my base metals? Yep. Sounds good. One more year to go in this console ship. I think we're good just to continue along here. No need to get too creative. Mm. Uh, Noble District in Roma is done. Alright. Now the Courts of Law are under construction. Very good. On the monthly tick, we'll see how that affects now the noble desired ratio. Hopefully Roma can start stacking it up. This isn't like uh, my previous um, Domicet campaign with Bronze Age Reborn, where Lapis Lazuli let you stack noble desired ratio, and I was in the late parts of that campaign. 
I did this strategy where I basically traded in like all the lapis on Earth to my late stage, uh, you know, Canaan Empire, and was able to get um, like thirty percent additional level ratio or something crazy. It was it was a crazy strategy, but um, I don't think there's any. Um, I don't think lapis is a resource in Terra Domita. Let me scan for it really quick. I'm not seeing it honestly. I don't think there's any noble desired ratio uh, resources in this in this mod. I suppose there might be. I haven't looked at it super closely. But nothing that I can remember from... Oh, hold on. Mirror. But mirror is really uncommon, so we might be able to get a little bit of this. Though not much, honestly. We'll see what we can do later. Anyways, uh, pop info. 18%. Now that's pretty good for a city. Or really for anywhere. So let's proceed. Okay. Uh, War with Epirus is looking pretty feasible now. Definitely. Well, once we get to, obviously, 465. Not right now, literally. Um, we can go ahead and grab, uh, going for land apportion, uh, or appropriation, rather, is a pretty good idea. The build cost and build time could be handy, but we're about to leave our, um, Bonnie leadership, which means, uh, much reduced, uh, build cost bonuses, so I guess we may as well grab this just for the next couple, uh, months, the next year, basically, that we've got, uh, Bonnie leadership for the build cost bonuses so we can stack it up as best we can. All right, speaking of which, let's go ahead and trade for stone once again. No need to even unpause here. Trade for stone. And build the granary, there it is. Then switch back for the monthly tick. We'll pause there. And trade back for sheep so that we get the sheep on the monthly tick. All right, good. food capacity will be welcome, although we uh, still have food problems, needless to say. How is Masalia doing? Sort of not super well. Kind of inactive this game. I guess they're doing a little bit right now. Mark Carthage, what are you up to? Not too much. They have a new Sofet. When's their election at? Because they're getting their Sofets changed at kind of weird times. Don't know what to make of that. Really don't know what to make of that. All right. Now, we probably should start preparing for war with Epirus to do basically on the first day of 465. Like, it probably is worthwhile to do that much prep. Um, and for that purpose, how do we want to do this? Well, we can have... Hmm, minor addendum. Gaius, Valerius, Babulcus, our soon-to-be consul, has suggested a small addendum to an often referenced law pertaining to the rights of the common folk. Should only be a small effort to push this through the Senate. Uh, yeah, I'll trade PI for stability. Thanks. Okay, so um, this war is going to mostly happen in Magna Gratia. I don't think I need to necessarily send forces over to Epirus itself, but that could end up being possibly necessary. Where'd they move their capital to? It's not in Passeron anymore. Oh, they moved it down to Ambrakia. This is a much better spot for their capital, so I can't blame them. Um, Here's what I think we do. Um, Numbers-wise, we do outnumber the Epiro Navy now, so that's pretty good. And our, our Navy's probably heavier, too. I think what we do is we basically use our navies to blockade Epirus and keep them from shipping over more troops. They might be able to raise a levy in Magna Gratia. Probably they don't even have anyone here to raise. But really, the armies of Magna Gratia will come from the city-states that will join the war. So this is the tricky part, is we have to basically simultaneously invade... Um, uh, Sapontum, Alea, and Tarentum, and also Thuria, and also Croton, and also Hipponian, kind of at the same time, so that they don't have a chance to organize. I think the move here is we take our main levy, split it into basically, what is the six sections, and then the remaining force with my Magnagration, you know, leader uh, helping out, or my Magnagration governor helping out, can go and focus on getting the Epirote territory actually in Magna Gratia, while the navies basically just blockade Epirus and hold them back from shipping forces over, because their army will probably not really be here. Also, these guys are fighting Issa, uh, Chersis, and Epidorm, so these guys are preoccupied up in the north, so we may not be in serious danger anyways. Um, let me go ahead and get this attended to. I think what I need to do here... Um, so first things first, let me... 
Let me just get my navies organized into Heraclea all for now, just so that they're in the area that this war will take place in. Um, let me send over the Heraclean Navy to go scout for the Epirote Navy. I assume that they're docked in their capital, but let me go see where they are, because that may not be where they are. Granite Rain Wait is done. Alright. Good. Just kind of looking around here. Once we get to June, I'm going to... Okay, I don't think they're here. Where else could they be? They're probably in the north, actually, helping in this war. Let me go look for them up here. Um, once we get to June, let me get my armies raised and start getting... Oh, they're right there. Okay, I, I spotted them for just a quick sec. Okay, I'm spotting an opportunity here. With all my navies put together, we... Hold on, wait. Oh yeah, that's Epirus, and then the other ships are from Sapontum. I think we can just blockade them in the port, and that accomplishes our goal just fine. So, new plan is just everyone come over here... And we'll just keep everyone together. In fact, I might actually merge them into one navy under one good admiral just to maximize things. I will restore the classifications. So this is just a temporary wartime measure, soon to be wartime measure. The three classes that I've designated will be restored after this tactical merging is no longer needed. All right, so let's get them sent over there. Uh, they can probably just hang out here in the water just fine. I'm hoping Epirus doesn't leave in the next, you know, six months. So I guess we'll see if the situation changes. But we should be able to hold them in there. In fact, let me actually... Oh, I should have done this right before the monthly tick. Let me go ahead and increase naval maintenance to full. Hopefully we get enough in time. And I'm going to go ahead and also increase army maintenance to full and pay for my forts. I'm going to get my armies raised uh, just in case uh, things end up taking too long. So we can raise them as far south as Fundi. I think we're going to do just that. We'll have them just walk over. Yeah, I think this is the best spot for them. And then we'll raise the integration force. We'll just have it be raised at Barium. Nothing too fancy here. Alright, so here's the plan. We're going to split you. So let's do this. Let me think about this. I need six, six groups, which means I can do it through splitting in half. So split in half to be two. Um, and then split again as four. Wait, no, hold on. That doesn't work. I have to do this manually. Alright. Let me just create three separate groups of donkeys. Where is my donkey? Oh, no, whatever. Let me just find it in here. Alright. So... Reorganize. All right, into this first army, I'm going to put, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. How large is this force here? Seven? I think that's fine. Um, so, let's see. Six, seven, eight, eight, six. Okay, yeah, so... Have you go to Canusium, and then into this next donkey army, we shall send in a similar couple. I'm just kind of randomly putting them in. I, I can't do this more precisely than that at the minute. Alright, maybe one, maybe cav, light infantry, spearmen, another light infantry, heavy infantry. What is this? I think this is seven. Yeah. Okay, so this one here, I'm going to send to Elea. And then the last army we're going to send in, uh, of the three with donkeys, I mean. I guess I could have them be in just three armies, that'd be a bit more durable, but I think we're able to pull this off. Because we're going to hit them where they're spawning, so. Like, uh, it's kind of just a mishmash army of just random stuff. You are going over here to work on Taurus and actually be joined in this force here. Like these guys are raising their armies, I think, to try to join this war, so we may catch them in weird positions. Alright, this force here now is a remaining 7k, so I guess actually I miscounted here. It's going to be 7k. This force doesn't have any supply train, but that's fine. This force here... I'm actually going to have this force here come over here to do the, the Tara Siege. And then the one that has the donkey, I'm going to send south. Got 
which one is the one with the donkey? Or the one that's going that way? Yeah, you with the donkey. I'm gonna send down to work on uh, Thorioi. I think that's the move. We'll just work our way down like that. Okay, I think we got that set up correctly. <sighs> Alright, Epirote Navy remains right there. Let's hope they stay there. This would be very nice if we can keep them there. Okay, the Sapontum Navy is leaving. That's not great, but the Epirote Navy is still there. <sighs> um, I really hope that they don't move. We have another hex ray ready. Let's see if we can get this hex ray in there in time. Maybe it'll get there before the war begins, but we shall see. Uh, no. <coughs> Alright. I'm going to temporarily merge these together to be the, um, just a blockade flotilla. It has one job in this war, which is to hold the Epirote Navy in place so that it does not get any funny ideas about bringing Epirote armies over to Magna Gratia. Let's we'll see if we can pull that off. Court of Long Roma is done. Good. Now we'll just save our money for this uh, upcoming war. No. Don't get any funny ideas. Actually, this is 7k, not 7 cohorts, so I was mistaken earlier. That's fine. Well, it's fine to have a larger army here to take on this stuff, then we can split it apart later. This is, I think, uh, going to be just fine. I think we're in a good position here. And as soon as the consular election occurs, I am going to war with Epirus. There's going to be no more delays. Granter and Tiber is done. Very good. Right, we could build a little bit more. Let me build one more granary in Luvinium, as I wanted to earlier, but I didn't have the money for it, so let me just trade for stone. While we still have the build cost bonus, may as well get these last granaries going. Trade for stone. Good. Build the granary down here. And then, um, we've got all the courts of law being constructed. All the, the uh, desired ratio stuff for what we want here is going to be good to go. We could build a conscription camp for quite a bit more manpower. That would certainly be not a bad idea, but I think I want to go ahead and... No, not, not the forum. Uh, what do I want here? Um, citizen and Noble Output. We can have three of these. This one uh, doesn't have any uh, desired ratio, but it's such a strong modifier, you only get to have three academies. Let me just get one academy queued up, and then maybe I'll squeeze one more in the last slot before I run out of uh, time on the Bonnie leadership. All right, switch back over to livestock. Good. All right, this guy did arrive in time. Very nice. No pirates in sight. That is a relief. Blockade flotilla. I'm going to put you under a good admiral as well. Um, this guy here can remain the admiral even once he's no longer the co-consul. And he is a solid character. This guy's about to be... Uh, that guy actually would be fine as well. I think having Appius Claudius Scoutex would be the right call here, so let's put him in there. Alright, good. You can stay in place there. Alright. I think we should hit full morale in time. Another import route available. Alright. Any glass? Nope. I saw the gemstones, but that was not glass. Shoot. Alright, well, what can we get instead? Um... Could get Cedar for additional manpower, and we could start to get Ship Recruit Speed Surplus. That could be quite strong. I kind of want to secure this, to be honest. It's not worth a ton. I mean, point three is okay. The manpower is nice in the meantime. But getting a Ship Recruit Speed Surplus would be quite nice. Incidentally, Ship Recruit Speed was the bonus of Wood in the vanilla game, and then Terra Domina adds Cedar. And so they made Wood have a Spearman offense, because Spearman is a modded unit. And so they moved that bonus over to Cedar. So, let me go ahead and trade for Cedar. Cedar is pretty rare in this part of the Mediterranean, so... Let me see if I can get some from the Easterners uh, whenever it pops up again. May as well, just to get the manpower and also the um, ship recruit surplus uh, once ship recruit speed surplus bonus once we get more of that. Oh, uh, there was a battle happening here between. Oh, this may pull out the Epirote Navy. Damn. All right. Let's hope that they don't. Okay, they're coming out. Let's hope they go back in there after this battle is done. 
All right, they are going back in there. All right, that was a battle between the Illyrians and Epirus' uh, forces in, in their war there. Okay, so Epirus is using this as their forward naval base for this war, which I guess makes sense, actually, given where it is. Not a terrible idea by Epirus, but it's about to come back to haunt them in a big way. We're actually almost at our manpower cap with our army raised, which is interesting. This is the world's most televised, like, planned invasion, so I don't know if Epirus doesn't figure out what we're doing, what they're thinking, but... Not much, apparently, is what they're thinking. Because this is about to be an absolute, uh... situation here. Integration of Polygnia. Our client Polygnia has long upheld Roman ideals in a fair and even-handed manner. It is a matter of course, therefore, that their eventual integration into our state is to be a cause for jubilation. The Polygnian elite have been instrumental in facilitating this union. And many are hoping to find a place in our government. Um, I think some of these characters look... Actually, these are Umbrians, so no, never mind. Uh, I just noticed that. So we're already at full popularity on Gaika, so we'll see uh, if he can be leveraged for something with this high popularity after the, uh, the election. Oh, we're down to number three. Yeah. Oh, well, whatever. I think these numbers, by the way, are always scaling with everyone's total score, so I'm not entirely sure how this is calculated. I guess it's from happiness, so I guess I am sure how it's calculated. It says it right there. I should check before I say things, but I think you're going to get there in time. Maybe. Maybe not. Let me, let me see if I can get there in time with this guy. One more um, hexer right here would certainly help. Also, let's put you under probing attack. This is the correct style, because this allows for 70% Liburnian strength, and it boosts up uh, hex rays as well, as you can see here. So for now, that is the way to go. Okay, um, renovations. Uh, Quintus Fabius Gerges, in his civic capacity, informs us that an opportunity has arisen. One of our most valued temples is in dire need of renovation. With enough investment, the building uh, could become a shining beacon of our benevolence and architectural prowess. Surely this opportunity is too great to miss. Um, that particular tile doesn't matter too much, so I'm going to go ahead and just decline to do this. This is just um, the city up here, which is, you know, fine, but it's not necessarily an amazing spot. So that's fine. Alright, let's see if we can get there in time. Maybe. I think we'll get there in time, actually. And then we'll just keep the rest of our ships here in port. Because even though we're going to hold the um, the Etrurian Navy in place, which is, or I mean, sorry, the Epirote Navy in place, which is the one I care about the most, the other guys do have navies, and they could snipe uh, moving even fully paid for hex arrays, which would be a logistic nightmare. Um, Tarentum, what's my first? No, not, no. <laughs> Somebody other than Tarentum, please buy my goods, please. I have so many goods to sell. All right, finally, someone from Gaul, what's my first? That's appropriate, I guess. All right, um, that's fine. Swing around here. Also, I didn't even look at this, but we do have our new Polygnia territory. Um, what do we have here? We've got a hunting camp for furs. That's probably the right kind of tile for that. Ah, uh, extra tribes and desired ratio, I think is not that big of a deal up here in the hills. Plus we can just send slaves here to get more furs. And then what do we have here? A fort that can go. And the capital stayed up there, that's fine. All right, so our border gore continues to get resolved. Very good. We can integrate Sabinia now. Let's go ahead and get this started here. All right, and then all that stuff is Brutia, which we'll get to at the end, I suppose. Oh, Epirus is uh, splitting their nape? What are you doing? Mystery behavior by Epirus. Okay, this is a bit weird. Um, I, I guess I could split my navy to respond, but I'm gonna go see where they're going. I wanna figure out what they're doing. I prefer to hold the one that's over here. And, oh, they're just blockading, okay. Okay, here's the new plan. Um, this is 20 triremes. So here's what I do. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to ride the line here very precisely. And move back into the sea tile. This guy's on the way. I'm going to leave behind. Um, let's see here. I'm going to leave behind 25 Liburnians, which I think Epirus won't feel confident enough to attack out, especially with my full naval marshal or full naval morale. Well, look at their naval morale. 
Are you, are you serious? 3.38? Oh my god. <laughs> this is just... We're gonna really have trouble with our naval morale in this campaign, but... I'm gonna send, um... Oh, hold on, wait. Yeah, I'll just leave you in charge of the, the blockading force, and then I'll send, uh... Um... Higgity... Heparos... Uh... Time to sink... Heparos. Alright. Don't, uh... <laughs> I'm not taking any any feedback on my naming decisions. This <laughs> Iggy Hepris, time to sink Hepris. <laughs> Can't believe I just actually typed that and then entered, and that's now part of this campaign. All right, um, let's not call it that. <laughs> the uh, let's just call this the um, uh, uh, let's just call this the strike. Uh, strike fleet. Nothing, nothing too fancy. Just <laughs> let's not do that. All right. So the strike fleet is going to be composed of all of my hex arrays. Twenty-five Liberian. Or no, I did this from the wrong way. Um, all right. Hold on. No. Shoot. Okay. No. Here we go. Wait. Okay. Wait. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, I'm so. I'm just floundering right now. All right. All of you go over, and then five... Oh my god, I'm, I'm literally losing my mind. Um, five Liburnians go over to the Strike Fleet. Here we go. So the, the Strike Fleet is thir all of our Hex Arrays and a few Liburnians for flanking, and then the rest of the, the 25 Liburnians blockade. 25 should be enough to hold back the 20 Epirotes, and I don't know if they're going to coordinate with the Sapontians. Probably not. I don't think the AI coordinates fleet stuff that well. All right. Um, where'd my str oh, the name went away. Whatever, classes two is fine. You basically head up here, and if this uh, other hex array gets here in time, I may just have it join the blockader so that it isn't out on its own. But that is the basic plan there. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try to catch these guys. So we have less ships, but we have better marshal by far. And uh, morale-wise, what are we looking at here? They have better morale. They're going to have much better morale. But we have uh, much heavier ships. So in a straight-up fight... Remember, Hex Arrays do have a 10% damage bonus versus Triremes. So they should win the morale battle, but we're going to win the damage battle. And what I can do as well, because I didn't actually include my good Admiral in this. Let me go ahead and just throw Publius Decius Mus over here with his uh, Nine Marshal to be our leader, our Admiral, temporarily. Although his loyalty is a bit questionable, so let's go for the slightly more loyal Lucius Postumius Megellus. Looks fine to me. All right, now I've got actually a good uh, leader here. That's going to improve our morale uh, a little bit there. That is going to do. <sighs> okay, <laughs> this is way more convoluted than it needs to be, but that is uh, the story of my entire campaign style. Oh, that's why they're here. They're helping to, to preserve this. We can actually trap their army, or some of their army, whatever this small army is, with this move here. All right, I'm going to have the Hex really come join this force, just to be on the safe side. All right, everybody teams up, you be on probing attack. Okay, and then it may be worth going for a tactic here. Um, I think going for ramming tactics is actually going to be good here, because we're going to do a lot more damage with our heavier ships, even if our morale's bad. We need to basically kill their ships before we run out of morale, so... We're going to go for ramming tactics with this force. We're basically going to punch in with this heavy navy. Maybe I should support it with a few more Liburnians. Maybe I'm being a little goofy here. Oh, they actually have another fleet here now. Tarentum's here. Uh, this screws up all my... Pl this screws up all of my... Um, all right, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to just merge my navy together. I can't afford to take massive losses here for no good reason. This was not a bad idea, but we're going to not try to min-max this. Merge it together, put it back under just Caudex, that's fine. Ramming Tactics is probably fine for this situation. We want to kill, 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 and we'll got, we'll have the numbers for just that. Uh, hex Rays in the front, Hex Rays in the back, and Liburnians in the side. Alright, good. Trade with these guys here. That's fine. A few more days, and then we will have our election, and everything will change. All right, Gaius, Valerius. Oh, hold on. 
Gaius, Valerius, Babulcus, now rules our glorious nation, 12, 9, 9, 5, a very, very solid leader. Popularis have assumed control of the consulship, so national freedom and happiness plus 8%, uh, and the Popularis want appointment already. We have a stability drop, that's fine. Integration of Nucaria, that's pretty good timing. Our client Nucaria has long upheld Roman ideals in a fair and even-handed manner. It is a matter of course, therefore, that their eventual integration into our state is a, to be a cause for jubilation. The Nucarian elite have been instrumental in facilitating this union. Many hope to find a place in our government. So these guys are Sabellians, so that is a big no. These guys are all going to sort of disappear ominously. All right. Omen, um, I think it's time for Mars, or we could go for Minerva. Um, although in this situation, I think morale of armies is not going to be necessarily a huge deal, given that a lot of the combat of this war will be on the seas. If only we had a morale of navies god set up for just right this situation. But that is not how that worked out. I think all things considered, I will go for... Because we will be, uh, you know, fighting Epirus. Probably not Carthage quite yet, but I am certainly thinking about it. For this next period, I think going for... I think just going for morale of armies is the safe bet. Although the extra discipline could be quite strong. It could be quite strong. Let me just go for Morale of Armies. Let's not play around. I know I'm very confident what Morale of Armies will do for our strategy, and it's going to do good things. So, Minerva it is. So, we've uh, read her information before. We have a new Civic Advancer needed, because one of our researchers was promoted up to be one of the consuls. Let's just throw um, Lucius Papirius Cursor with his Polymath ability into the position. That's going to do... And then we also have a new character needed for the Praefectus Militaris. Let's put uh, this guy that we previously stopped from the console, Decius Sergius. He's going to be pretty good as an officer like this, so that's fine. And now we can assign a trait to Gaius Valerius Babulcus. Let me actually check and see what's going on in my government here. So in terms of... So we're borrowing zeal from this guy, which means that we um, shouldn't bother boosting zeal. But we could bother with boosting Marshall. That'd be a... Perhaps a little overkill, but you know what? We are going all for it. I may even squeeze in the first Punic War into this guy's term. That seems like a really bad decision, but I'm thinking about it. I'm very much thinking about it. 13 Marshall is a rare thing indeed. All right, go for uh, a strategy focus, sounds fine. And then I'll talk about his uh, traits in the next episode, but in terms of the government effects of everything, Looks like the Popularis continue to ascend uh, with this uh, double consular election. That's certainly helping things out. In fact, actually, the Popularis faction leader, our old friend Publius Sempronius Sophus, is the assumed next consul. It's been over 10 years now, so we can do this. And it looks like Appius Claudius Gaudex, our former co-consul, is going to be the next co-consul uh, in the next election. So an interesting and maybe cursed Popularis Optimatus team-up. <laughs> I don't know how this has happened, but... That seems to be where things are going. I would probably be okay with Sophus taking over again. Stats are all right. Um, he's aged a bit, so he does have some problems. But uh, we'll see what happens. He was a pretty good character to start the campaign off. And we have a... Um, at this point, uh, Bonnie are still technically the most influential faction, but the Optimatis have gained a bit more, and the Popularis have gained a bit more, so things are becoming a bit more even. So the early game uh, sort of complete stranglehold by the Optimatis has completely vanished. Now essentially the three parties are approaching something kind of like parity, which I'm honestly fine with, so that's going to be fine. Also, Freeman happiness from the Popularis is phenomenal for the next five years. So. This all looks fine. And incidentally, what they want is to declare a war with Carthage. Hmm, okay, we'll come back to that later. Uh, have less than 24 tier. I'm gonna try to see if I can do this. Appoint um, Marcus Valerius Corvinus to be a governor or to be an officer. Okay, we'll come back to that later as well. But that's going to be it for this episode of the Rome campaign, leaving things off on a cliffhanger, but I don't want to get too far into another consular term uh, when that is going to be a great way to kick off episode four. So. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.